Good evening, good morning, wherever you may be, my friends. Uh, I am Shattered Civ. We are about to play a playthrough of Talisman. It's one of my favorite board games. Uh, I actually own this. Uh, I have a physical copy of this. Now, um, I'm going to play with the components that I have access to. Uh, my friend has uh, one uh, little tiny uh, expansion pack called the Highlands. Uh, the other two that I own are the, uh, well, it's three. It's the Reaper, the City, and the Woodlands. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a game, a two-player game up. We're going to pretend like, let's say, me and my friend are playing. Um, now, the great thing about having this digital uh, edition version is you don't have to deck around with all the cards. And trust me, guys, if you get all the expansions, it is a nightmare to set up and put away. It takes it takes you at least at least 30 minutes to set up if you've got all the all the expansions. So what we're going to do, let's just get right into it. Um, I'm going to start a new game up. I'm going to, um, like I said, I'm going to reduce it by one. I did play with three players last night. I ended up uh, having a marathon of uh, like six hours, guys. It was like a real game. Um, <clears throat> I ended up dying twice. The AI, one of them died like three times. The other guy died twice. It's, it was an absolute fucking mess. So what we are going to do, we are going to add the uh, the one more expansion pack. Um, and that will be the Highlands right here. So we're going to enable the expansion. Plus the characters. Everything else is uh, pretty much good to go. I'm going to go right down here. Just going to... One one little thing that I want to check on. Um, lots of little rules that you can use to, uh, to speed up your game. So the timing windows I want at max. Uh, the, once upon a time, guys, this never really used to have that option. It to interrupt somebody would be next to impossible so luckily we just came up with a patch for this game and it's uh it's actually it's worthwhile picking up now i'm not sure what it would be like playing online but um yeah this is it so this is all the boards you're gonna see it in a second all right so what happens is i've got a selection of three characters that i get to start off with Hmm. All right. Um, <clears throat> not bad. Not really the character I'm looking for. The alchemist isn't bad either. The alchemist will allow you to basically, as you collect items, you can just basically turn them into money. I think I'm going to go with a Valkyrie. Let's, uh, let's take a look at her. You may add one to your attack score during battle. You may visit the graveyard as if you were of evil alignment, even though I'm not. And whenever a follower is killed, you may resurrect it and keep it on your uh, as a follower instead of allowing it to be placed on the discard pile. You may only resurrect each follower once per turn. I don't know, man. Her strength and her craft are good for starters. Those are your your base stats. Obviously, life, fate, and gold is uh, something a little different. We'll we'll get into that as we go. Uh, do I maybe I want the uh, maybe I want the fucking alchemist now. I begin with five gold. During your turn, you may alch um, alchemize any objects you have into gold, which is good. During your turn, you may alchemize any gold you have into potions. For each gold you discard, you may replenish one fate, heal one life, or gain one spell. You know what? Um, I can alchemize objects into gold and alchemize gold into potions during the same turn. Now, he's weak. This guy's as weak as a kitten, but that changes. Um, and he's neutral. I do like neutral. And he starts off in the city, uh, the city square. Um, fuck, man. I didn't have a really good uh, starting selection here. This is generally what you do, guys. Is uh, out of your stack of available character cards, you you draw three, uh, totally at random, and then you get to choose one. The actual real rules state you're only supposed to pull one card, and you're not even allowed. And whatever it is, that's who you stick with. And trust me, there's some real fucking lemons. So that's why I like to choose at least three. I don't really know here, man. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the uh, the alchemist. I think I do like the fact that I can uh, alchemize stuff on the fly. Now this is a little bit of a complex um, procedure here, since we are playing with the woodlands. We have light and dark fate. Basically, light fate allows you to influence your own roles. Dark Fate allows you to influence your opponent's roles. 
<laughs> but it also, if I add two to the light fate and one to the dark fate, I am considered light bound. So anything on in the Woodlands cards that say um, you are affected if you're light bound this, follow these conditions. If you're dark bound, follow these conditions. If you're unbound, which means that you have an equal number of the two, uh, there could be another thing. If you're fateless, that is another further condition. So this is a uh, little tiny rules, guys. I'm not going to totally get into it. Uh, now, I do start off in the city. It looks like the minstrel, oh my god, is starting off in the tavern. The minstrel can basically steal any of your followers if they land on your square. But you know what? That's not going to happen because I'm not going to land on the on the uh, the minstrel and he's not going to land on me. So I'm going to roll one die to find out where I can move. Now, I can move anywhere uh, where it's lit. So four squares that way, four squares that way. I could also enter the city by going down this route. That'd be one, two, three, and four. So I can enter the city. Now the city is, uh, is super fast. Uh, I'll give you a quick explanation. So the, the main board here is just the green board, okay? So if you look at the green board, that's what comes with your $75 base game. This thing here in the center, okay? So that's your base board. All these other expansions here are roughly about $50 uh, a, a, a pop, okay? But totally worth it. They add uh, all these little nifty things. So right now, uh, if you're playing just the main board, when you land on the city, which is really hard to do, and you do have to, you have to get the exact roll to get into the city. Um, instead, now, you're allowed to use this kind of as a channel. One, two, three, four. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the city first. Some of the encounters are a little, little random. Now it says here we are in, uh, we've just entered Royal Lane. Uh, we need to draw a card. Do not draw a card if there was already three in this space. Uh, it's, given, it's given me the chance to roll the die. I'm, I'm just going to move. Is that where I'm moving? One, two, yeah, I guess so. No, it's this here. No, it's here. We are going to South Side Alley, so we still got to draw a card. I'm going to travel there. My guy will move over there. Somebody has a an ability to actually re-roll my roll. I don't know why you'd want to do that. And uh, we are going to draw an adventure card. It's a panhandler. It's a follower. If you land on a character, that character must either give you one gold or one object of their choice. The panhandler then joins that character as a follower. So I'm going to grab him just in case. Uh, I do land on somebody. I can uh, cause that uh, for shenanigans. That ends my turn. We're going to go and check out what the minstrel does. So the minstrel also gets a die roll. Now the minstrel can charm animals and dragons, I believe. So he's going to select a move. He's going to go into the woodlands. He's going to choose a path, a destiny path. And there's his event. I'm going to uh, pause that. The Norns have rewoven the tapestry of fate and changed the destiny of the world. Each character flips all of their fate. Then replace any alternative ending you are using with a random hidden alternative ending. Take a secret look at the new hidden alternative ending and discard this card. So what's happening here is our fate is going to flip. So my t my uh, two light and one dark is now going to be one, uh, one light, two dark. And same for him. His uh, three and two is going to flip. Now, I don't know how the, the conditions of the game are going to, uh, what's going to happen. So basically, when you get to the center of the board, it fires off the condition known as, uh, you know, the crown of command. Or the ending. Now, the ending's hidden. He is really lucky because this one dude is able to see what the conditions he needs to do to meet in order for him to win the game. It could be something, something as simple as just getting there, and as soon as you you touch uh, foot in that one square, bingo, bango, you win the game. Or it could be something as complex as having to chase things around the board and uh, like I did last night, which uh, actually ended, a, like ended up uh, adding another hour to the game. But anyways, there's not much I can do there. We are gonna win. So yeah, we're gonna flip our, our fate, which just happened. And he got to see the ending of the, the game, the little lucky bastard. Um, now, before we go too, too far, I would like to see what his abilities are. Animals and dragons will not attack you, although you may choose to attack them. And if you do not attack an, an animal, you can charm it. 
with one die. If you roll higher than the animal strength, it joins you. So good luck with dragons. Which is which is too bad because uh, that should scale as you get stronger and stronger. You should be able to tame um, dragons eventually. But eh, whatever. I'm just going to go for the old dice roll, and I am able to now, if you kind of follow the progression here, I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, if I were to follow the roads, or I can enter any of these shops, anything that I have money for, and trust me, the, uh, the alchemist has a lot of it, okay? Um, you can just kind of cycle by here. So I can either buy um, the Magic Emporium, which uh, I am a good spell caster. I could start buying spells. Ooh, this is nice. The Academy. So instead of, like, when you kill monsters in a battle, let's say, which is hand-to-hand -hand combat, you add the uh, the strength together, okay? And once you collect seven strength, you can increase your strength by one. Uh, I know that sounds a little uh, a little weird right now, but the same thing works with craft. This one here allows you to mix and match and then just come in and just, uh, hey, I've got, like... Uh, two in craft creatures, and I have five in strength creatures. Bingo, bango, what would you like? One strength or one craft? A little bit of advanced ruling here, guys, but uh, I'm just kind of trying to uh, explain it to you as we go. So I have five gold. I really, really, really want to get into the armory here. The flail, guys, is probably the best weapon in the game. So we are going to go to Guild Street, and we're going to travel here, and we're going to have to uh, draw a city card. Now, I did not have enough points to move into the armory yet. Okay. Uh, you still have to draw a card. Hagler. It's a follower. You may trade with a character that you land on by exchanging any one object of yours for one object of theirs. Nice. So I can force people to give me stuff. That's weird that I've got uh, these two types of followers that can kind of force that. Now... What do I have in my inventory over here? I just have two followers. Uh, I have the panhandler and the haggler. And a bunch of gold. And that's it. All right, we're going to end that turn. We're going to try to keep it fast. We got him in the woodlands, so he's got a rock and roll. I forgot what uh, his destiny path is. I should probably take a look. It will influence quite a bit of things, so he's just going to fly to the fairy ring. He's got to roll a d6 here. A 2 is not good. That's lose of turn. He's enchanted. And he's rolled another 2. Now, I could have actually used my Dark Fate to uh, alter his roll if I wanted to, but he didn't. I didn't have to. He, he fucking screwed that up on his own. So I am now considered, guys, Dark Bound. All right. Why is that? Well, I've got two dark uh, fates and one light fate. I really hate to make it very complex, guys, but that's what the Woodlands does. It does add that little nuance there with your fate and the ability to be able to influence others' roles. And I tell you guys, it's probably one of the best mechanics that uh, I've added to this game yet. And I look at the artwork. I just can't believe the artwork for this game. Um, we are going to roll the dice for movement. And, guys, the terrible, terrible control scheme for this game just absolutely sucks. So we're going to walk in. Uh, we are going to travel here. <clears throat> now, this little delay that you're seeing here, it's uh, to allow me, in case I want to actually spend a Dark Fate point, um, if you set it to its default, you have very little time. And like I said, with the shitty controls, you may or may not actually be able to uh, access it in time. So... This is good. They've also added a pause button. I think they've listened to me. I was telling them, I'm like, dude, you guys so need a pause button. So now your triangle is pause. All right. So what are we going to do? We are going to buy the mighty, mighty flail. It is a weapon. You may roll two dice during battle and add them together to determine your attack roll. But if you roll doubles, your opponent cannot add their attack roll to their attack score. So if you roll double sixes, uh, you're you're doing well. You're beating the shit out of uh, everything, and that is definitely going to um, help me out in combat now. Now that has used up uh, 
some of my shit. I don't have any objects, so I can't really alchemize any objects except for obviously the flail for one gold. And we're not going to do that. We're just going to pass the turn over to the minstrel. Minstrel is going to make the mighty roll. Uh, oh, uh, the, the minstrel is stuck, remember? So we are just going to make another roll. That's a nice roll. I could get out of here now. I kind of really want to start exploring, but we are first going to go into the Rogue's Guild. I'm going to travel there. And because I am neutral, you can tell what your alignment is here by these. Uh, see the, the green that's beside my name? Uh, that right, uh, that uh, green in between these two panels and the white. So this means the minstrel is good. The alchemist is neutral. If it, if that was red in the middle, you'd be evil. Now, again, just like uh, light and dark fate, it does make a difference, right? Considering I'm neutral, I am going to go to the guild master. If I roll a five or a six, I'll get some money off of this guy. Oh, that's a gold. That is a gold piece. I am okay with that. Now we're going to let the minstrel give. He could re-roll for me. And he can also roll a six for me too. So there's always that. That's going to end my turn. And the minstrel is now on his merry way with a two. And that looks like he's going to the woods. Nope, I'm not. I don't want to. Don't want to re-roll that. We are good. He gets to draw one. Um. Wood, wood, uh, woodland card. So this is a Fomorian, okay? Uh, the, we'll check the picture out. Uh, it's a strength seven creature. This hideous giant delights in displaying his might. If you defeat him, instead of taking him as a trophy, right now uh, the minstrel is dark bound. So you're going to look at the one that has the black circle. Instead of taking him as a trophy, if you defeat the Fomorian, you will instantly gain him, uh, gain you one strength, and you leave him face ups on the pile. All right. Uh, so that is if if he ends up uh, beating this guy, and I don't think they're probably going to go toe to toe. Uh, I guess he has to. He's got a three added to his four strength is seven, and that's an eleven. So uh, the Fomorian definitely won. Now, when you when you get uh, hit in combat, it is not a Oh, it's allowing me to re-roll? No, I don't want to touch. Um, it's not a death. It's just you lose out of the green marker there. You lose a point. Watch. Player two loses life down to three from four. Okay. Uh, I have four. He has three now. We're going to roll. We're going to get out of here. I, I think, like I said, I've uh, I've been wandering around the city. It's not an ideal place to, uh, to really try to level your guy up. It's more obviously meant to get the equipment you need quickly and get the fuck out. All right, we're on Cobble Lane. That's what it looks like. We are going to draw an adventure card. A loyal companion. A stray pet has chosen to follow you as its new master. Gain one pet card for free, then discard this card. Okay. I am getting so many followers. Now, guys, you have an unlimited amount of followers that you can have in your party. Um. Oh. Mez. Whenever you land on a space with instructions to draw one or more adventure cards, before you encounter the space, you may move one face up adventure card in the same region to your space. You may only do this once per turn. I know exactly what that means. I'm going to grab that, Fez. All right. What is that? Is that a type of monkey? So basically what's it saying, guys, is uh, if there's any adventure cards that are face up, and I don't think there is any uh, right now on the board that we've flipped that we haven't dealt with directly. Now, uh, th this is what is so great about this game. Every time you play, it changes. It changes dynamically. So if I wanted to grab one of these cards here, which uh, turned out to be, I'm not going to open it, but it turns out to be uh, wanted posters, okay? I could move one of those on top of... Uh, on top of uh, somewhere in the same region, which is would be in the city, out here. Um, if there was a card here, and uh, I was here, where it says draw two cards. Where's the two card? Uh, there it is. So I have to draw two cards here. If I lay in there, and there's another card over here, I can grab that card first and throw it over here, and then grab another card. Really kind of cool, actually. Um, again, if you guys are first uh, new to this game. Um, 
just watch me play and uh, things will kind of kind of come in. Uh, you'll see all the different panels laid up. Right now, has to draw in the woods. Have to draw a card. It's a forest goat with a strength of two. Okay, so he's got to compare his strength. It is an animal. He could charm it if he wanted to. He's. I think he's trying to charm it. Yeah, he's trying to charm it. He failed. He didn't get. Uh, he didn't beat its strength. Now. The thing is, when you're playing this in the digital version, guys, it's uh, it can be a little confusing because the, the AI instantly takes over and does its thing. I don't really want to land here. I do have, you know what, I'm going to go into the city. We're going to go visit the Enchantress. I do have one gold, though, which is good. Yeah, we're going to go in. Um, now, I have a chance of rolling on the Enchantress chart. If I roll a 1, I can turn into a Toad. Now, I do have a Fate Point, though. So, I am willing to guy kind of, like, I'm, I'm assuming I'm not going to roll a 1. Right? I don't even know what that fucking was. Lose the strength. I can't. I'm going to leave it. Uh, no, am I? Yeah, I'm going to leave it because if I re-roll and I roll a one, uh, not only is it going to use up a fate point, my only light fate point, it's also going to turn me into a, a toad. I don't want to be turned into a toad. If he wants to, he can make a re-roll and, and force me to re-roll it. But then I believe, oh, he's going to do it too, you little fucker. I gain a spell instead. He actually used his, uh, his fate, his dark fate to try to influence me. What a little shit. Instead, he rolled me a six, which allows me to draw a spell. Cut the thread. I fucking hate this spell. It's it's hard to use. Cast on another character when they spend a fate. Now, depending if you're light or dark bound, it changes the rules of the spell. The, the effect of that fate is cancelled and you replenish all your life. Right now, I am dark bound. So, if I were to queue that up and the minstrel was to uh, ca use a face point, fate point again, the effect of that fate is cancelled and the character loses all their fate. Um, I'm going to continue with that. We're going to go down there. We are going to queue it up. Oh! Oh! Hold it, though. Uh, it says any character, guys. you got to be really careful with this. Now, obviously, if you're playing cast on another character. Okay, no, never mind. If it says cast on any character, guys, careful. Because there's no way once you cast the spell to, um, to turn it off again. Uh, so if you end up casting a, uh, a malevolent spell on yourself, tough titties. Tough titties. Right now, I'm queuing it up. So at any point in time when he spends a fate point... It is just instantly going to trigger. Now he's making his way through here. He's crazy. Lots of lots of uh, little nasty stuff here. Now he has to follow the arrows. He can go back or forth. It doesn't matter. You can go either way you want in um, the highlands or the woodlands. Uh, in the city, you can only go one direction, though. Just keep that in mind. So there's these three creatures in the dense forest. He's got to fight this. You're fucked. It's uh, a four craft versus a uh, six craft creature. She wins, even with a roll of a one. He's trying to do the re-roll. And that's a tie. That's a standoff. That means he's not going to lose any health, but it also ends his turn. He is not able to access any of the cards that are underneath. So we are going to go and big, big die roll. Three. Okay, I can move back into the city, or I can move... Uh, out and about now here's the highlands guys so uh the crags here is how you enter right the city you enter through the main city square and over here through the forest square you enter the woodlands and some of these are really cool guys like if you go into here i don't know if i can can i yeah um okay you can see the sentinel right here all right this is how you get across into the middle region uh the middle region's a harder region uh Definitely something you have to consider. But if you look at these here, guys, 
go to this one, zoom in on it, and check it out. You can see the Sentinel actually down way off in the distance. I love it. I fucking love it. When I play this game, when I'm sitting there just with my, waiting for my friends to make their moves, I will sit there and quite literally just stare at the board. There is just so much little stuff to, uh, to really enjoy on every square, right? And they all make sense. And the way they connect and how you come out of the out of the highlands, right? And then you get into more into the craggy mountains and eventually, you know, you're up on icy, slippery paths and canyons. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. Let's get to the game and uh, I get to move. Uh, I think we're going to head towards um, the plains here. I will try to get this quick. I know I talk a lot, guys, but, you know, if you're wondering how to play this game, this is probably a, a good way to start it. Uh, we're going to draw an adventure card. It's a freaking blizzard. Winter has come with a vengeance, and a blizzard envelops the land. For two rounds, all characters, no matter what region they are in, only move one space per turn. The blizzard then abates to the discard pile. All right, we're going to encounter that. I'm, uh, I'm going to end turn. I mean, that's all I can do. So he can only move one as well. And Scythian Unicorn. It's a Craft 5 animal. Fierce, stubborn, and pure. Its horns have said to have healing properties. If you defeat the, the Unicorn, heal one life. Oh, you're not defeating it with a roll of that. That's 11 to 7. He could try to re-roll, but he wouldn't even be able to win. It would be an impossible, useless fate roll. He's going to die. He's going to lose up another health. He's down to two life in the woodlands. Not good, especially when you're the minstrel. I don't know what the AI is thinking about going into there, but uh, whatever. <laughs> okay, so we could go to the crags, and that is just a uh, roll of D6. Uh, now, if I get on there, if, uh, if I land there and I roll a 6, I will gain a point of strength. A bar barbarian leads you out. You gain one strength. However, I, if I roll a one, I would fight a, a craft creature, a spirit, a ghost with craft four. I guess it's kind of like the barrel whites. Or I could just go here and draw one card in the woods and it's totally random out of the adventure deck pile. Which, guys, uh, I'm kind of curious about this myself. There is... Just in the in this on these decks, you'll see right here there is two two hundred and seventeen adventure cards, guys. You and these cards are small. They're they're small. There's the size of like a matchbox, maybe a little bit bigger, and you can imagine two hundred and seventeen of them stacked up, right? And you know you don't want your cat jumping up on the fucking table. <laughs> and there's still more, right? I mean, there's still another fifteen wandered posters now. You can go back and you can also check out the. Uh, items that you've already discarded. So there's one from the city, one from the woodlands. Nothing else yet. Again, we're still kind of really uh, early into the game. I think I'm going to uh, take a chance and uh, hopefully I'll roll a six. And if Buddy tries to change my dice roll, it's going to trigger my spell as well. So fuck him. Yes, it's queued up. So what we're going to do, I'm going to roll the dice. Give me a six. Okay, a five is uh, no effect. Okay, whatever. Now, he could re-roll. He could re-roll me a six if he has... No, he... Yes, he does. See, he's got two dark, so he could re-roll me. I'm just going to pass the turn there. Now, he has to roll a, a four, five, or a six in order to get out of the swampland. And he's done that. And he's only going to be able to move one space. Anyway, he's moving back! Back! What are you, a fool? I'm going to leave that. I mean, he's, he's obviously lost again. Yeah. Oh, man. This guy is just, like, looking to kill himself. And those are the things that he can't access. Man, I want to go there. Now, you're going to see these cards. They're going to be laying out, uh, laid out all over the board. I am... Uh, I'm going to just move one space. I think I'm going to go into... I'm going to go into here for now. The uh, the highlands can be somewhat intimidating. Um, what I should do is probably go into the woodlands first, then run to the highlands. But I also do. You know what? I have that flail. Fuck it. Let's go. We're going to go into the highlands. 
uh, get to draw a Highland Adventure card. Eerie Outrider. Strength 3. A keen-eyed Eerie Outrider soars among the clouds above this area. It will remain here until it is killed. So obviously there is very, um, very mountain orientated cards that are here. Rolling boulders, landslides, really, really cool stuff. And uh, same with the woodlands, same with the city, right? So each of the expansion packs you get definitely, definitely has a, a flavor to it. We are going to use the flail, and we're going to see why. Uh, instead of me rolling one die, I'm going to roll both. Boom! For eight plus two for attack roll of ten. And that's a six for him. Dead. Dead, dead, dead. We're going to continue that. We're not going to re-roll, obviously. Now, if I were to re-roll, I would only be able to re-roll one of those dice. And obviously, I'd roll the two again, right? Unless I'm trying to roll low. All right, that was a pretty good first trip into the Highlands. Now we're back to the Woodlands with the Minstrel, making the mighty move. Like I said, he can go either direction. Is he going to run? He should run. He's going deeper and deeper into the thickets. He's got to draw two cards, two trinkets, two objects. One is uh, the Token of Promise. The other one is uh, discard this card at any time to take one follower from a character in your space. Uh, because it's a trinket, though, it doesn't take up any of your inventory room. Let's just uh, keep on moving on. And uh, at any point in time, that was lucky for him. No creatures encountered. Now, at, again, any point in time, we can kind of examine everything that he's picked up. Uh, this trinket here, the Token of Promise, is really good. If you have no fate at the start of your turn, you may gain a fate. Or it's replenish. Discard this card at any time to gain one fate. I want that. I want that. And I should go beat him up for it. But we're not going to bother. We're going to go further into the highlands, guys. Yeah, we're not going to bother. We're going to go down into uh, here, the ravine. Let's check her out. Nice and idyllic. We are going to travel there. It's going to make us draw two cards. Now, I do have that one uh, follower that allows me from the same region to grab... Um, uh, another adventure card. Unfortunately, there is no other adventure cards in this region. So we're just going to draw two cards. One's a treasure chest. And a harpy. Ooh. Ooh, the harpy. I cannot fight w using my flail. So that's going to be an even Steven roll. And... You'll see that little number uh, in the bottom right corner of the pictures. You will see for the Harpy, it's a three. For the treasure chest, it's a five. Those are the encounter numbers. So basically what's happening is your uh, encounter number three is the first thing that you fight before you can get to encounter number five. So I obviously have to kill the Harpy before I can get to the treasure chest. So let's try to do that. It's, uh, I, I, yeah, I can't really do much. We're going to go in. It's uh, even Steven. I just give me a nice dice roll. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna hit me. I think I'm gonna re-roll. That's my only fate, late fate point. Give me uh, give me at least a four. Yeah, that's a win. That is a win. That changes a uh, a lose into a win with the fate point. I don't have any more fate points. I'm gonna continue. Yes. And uh, to this. To the winner goes the spoils. You may discard the chest during your turn to roll one die and gain that much gold. If you have the treasure map, you may roll one additional die and gain that much gold. Now, it's an object. Unless you have a mule or a cart, guys, you can only carry four objects. Now, I do have a couple other objects there, um, but they're trinkets. Trinkets do not count towards your inventory like I was trying to explain. I will try to uh, explain this as we go on. Now, here's the hidden ending. We don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. The minstrel knows what it is, though. The little prick. And he's going further and further in. Blasted Heath. And he gets to draw a card. He might actually get to the end here. Not a bad thing. Uh, add one to your strength if you're using a weapon in battle. It's a whetstone. We all know what uh, whetstones do. I know you guys all love to watch me play the long dark. So, all right. That's going to move us uh, funny enough onto that one square. Onto the cliff where we're overlooking the Sentinel. Down below, we are going to travel there. Let's draw one card. Let's do her. It's a lucky charm. 
I may discard the charm when you are about to make a die roll. You choose which result on the die to use instead of rolling it. So in other words, do you want it to be one or six? Uh, one to six. Um, I could use that during combat. It's uh, it's great, but it's a big, big item. It's not a trinket. It should be a trinket. He's going all the way to the end, I believe, my friends. He's only got one life left. Like the thing, he's now in the bog, old growth. Draw three woodland cards and add them to the space. He's got a cobbly now, servant of Mab, and a word dragon. Oh lord. Um. Okay, I'm not 100% sure. I do want to kind of go over there. I want to see what's going on here and why he ended up skipping that encounter. Let's take a look at the cards. The Cobbly Nau? Nau? This Fey is causing disaster for miners and travelers in the area. The only thing I can think is he ended up um, avoiding the dragon. And uh, when he doesn't attack the dragon, because if you fight, if you get out of the square, anything that has strength and strength, you add it together. So when you land on the square, it's going to be a nine strength creature. But I like that verdant talisman, man. That's a really, really good item. Uh, I'm just going to roll the dice. We're going to we're going to get on with my move. I again, it looks like he kind of lucked out there. I am going to go a little further into the hills. i got to be careful here, though. I do have a flail, but if I'm fighting a craft creature, I'm going to be in, in trouble here. We're going to run to the hills. Run to the hills. Astrologer, a stranger. The astrologer will remain here for the rest of the game. Draw three adventure cards, take one, and discard the others. You may place the adventure card on top of its deck at the start of any character's turn. Well... I'm going to do that. I discard two. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to discard that. And that's the only one I'm going to discard. The other two, um, I'm going to just put right back onto the pile. And uh, I'm going to end my turn. Meanwhile, back in the woodlands, we have got this guy racing to the end. I don't think he's going to do much here. I should probably check out what his uh, destiny path card is. I'm pretty sure he's not going to get a destiny here. He's in dense force. He's got to draw three cards. This guy is just drawing the, the absolute shit here. He's got a, a, a naiad, which is absolutely terrible. Subtract two from your craft automatically. Like, oh, oh, you're going to get destroyed absolutely destroyed I'm surprised he, he, he got that good of a roll but yeah boom uh, he's gonna lose you're gonna lose a health I don't know how he gained a health but uh, he did somehow I'm gonna actually check his uh, his path out here you can read it you, this is available for anybody to, to read He's on the warrior's path. The first is just flavor text. So he's adding two to his strength when he's in this area. When you reach the meeting with Destiny's space, you have to fight Queen Mab in psychic combat. And it's equal to twice your strength. And if he defeats her, he can get a Destiny. I have two dark points, so, so good luck with that. We are going to roll the dice. We're going to go further into the woodlands. Now, I should be able to grab those cards right off the bat. Draw three cards. I know what the first two are. Can I add these? I want to make sure that I'm not adding them right away. Yeah, I'm going to travel here. Oh, or I could bring the astrologer back over here. Yeah, I could bring the, the fez. Whoop. I don't want to do that, though. I want to continue. We just want to grab those three adventure cards. Absolutely. The magpie. Uh, where's... You know what? I, did I fucking throw those away? I 
I did too. The ones I wanted, I fucking threw away. So you're supposed to retain the ones you want to keep. Damn it. See, this is what I mean about the digital version, guys. You're not able to fucking go back in time. Pisses me off. And it could fuck me right up now. Wind slasher. Uh, so I'm sitting on that boulder somewhere. Why isn't it uh, available to me? Is it down here? Is this what this is? No, that is uh, the path, the destiny path cards. I'm not sure where the um, ability to use the uh, the alchemist, or the astronomer is, but whatever. I'm gonna uh, gonna go in here. We are going to fight uh, even Steven. Give me a sex. That's nice. Good number. Good number. Give me. Lo, you son of a bitch. That is a tie. I'm not going to re-roll for obvious reasons. Uh, I don't even have a light point, so that's uh, tough titties. He could re-roll uh, my roll if he wanted to. Fucking standoff. I wish I... Uh, those other two cards would have been so different. I would have fought a mountain lion at uh, strength three. Damn it. That is something, again, something you wouldn't do normally obviously right if you're playing with friends because you wouldn't do those types of stupid moves queen map craft eight here we go boom and eight he's instantly lost he's not gaining a destiny and he can't even re-roll so it's uh eight to nine you're out of here bro and you're losing a health do you lose a health you might lose a health let's see Oh, for a death. Uh, now that character's dead. Now, don't don't worry if that happens while you're playing the game, guys, because I, because he rolled a one, he gets to move the Reaper. If the Reaper lands on a character, it uh, brings up a special uh, chart you have to roll on. Oh, oh, here he is. Now I get the options. You fucking, <laughs> you fucker. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to use this. Then I'm going to use this. That's going to allow me to roll a six. So I'm going to get six gold out of this treasure chest. I'm going to know it for... <laughs> nice. That was a good play. Boom. And instantly rolls up as a six. And he's dead. He can't influence me. So that's six gold in my pocket. Now, do I want to encounter this boulder? Let us view the details. I do like to actually uh, fire that off. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> you send this boulder that just goes off and starts rolling over all over everybody. Lose one life to discard this card. You know what? I'm going to return this card to the deck. Uh, that will be my next uh, the tumbling boulder. All right. We are pushing in. We are going into the hills. Oh, that's a three card fucking draw. Ouch. What's the other way? I don't know if I really want to do that. The other one's back to the astrologer. And I won't have to draw a card if I do that. Eh, all right. Let's go to the uh, the hills here. Oh, this is just, uh, it's not three. It's not three draw. Oh, it's a one. Okay. Well, let's go there. And it will be obviously the boulder. So we're going to encounter the boulder. Obviously, we know what, the, what it is. Ooh, what is it? It's the boulder. Now, as long as I don't roll a one, I'm fine. Oh, two, that's fine. Move the boulder six spaces counterclockwise. All right, so it is now moving across the board. Oh, and it kills anything it runs over. Ah, fuck, I forgot about that. Oh, damn it. For each space the boulder moves on to, any characters there lose one life and any cards there are discarded. Ah, ah, I think I just hurt myself. Okay, again, gets the, a draw out of three of the remaining uh, cards. They've got the Cat Burglar. Uh-huh. I thought, according to the rules, um, any of those cards would have to be discarded. I'll have to check out the, uh, 
the alternative alternative rules. Now, there is so many rules to this game, guys, and it's easy to get just stuck in a quagmire of just arguing the nuances of each of the wording. Oh, no, it says that, you know, any character or that, and trust me, it can devolve into that because this game can get fucking highly competitive. <laughs> and I'm not really one to go and attack people. This is the ravine. I'm going to travel there. Let's go take a nice close look at that. Listen. Hear the hear the sound of the, 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 the river? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, what do we got here? Fez, what can I bring over? I can bring the boulder over here. But then I'd have to instantly roll. Oh, that is an interesting card. I could summon that boulder up anytime I wanted and just let it roll past. Like, if that's, people are getting too close. <laughs> that would be wicked. All right, anyways, let's, uh, let's just continue here. We get to draw two cards. Prospector, which is a stranger. You may sell any of your gems to the prospector, discard the lodestone, opal, emerald, ruby, or diamonds as if you were at the city and gain the indicated amount of gold. The prospector will depart to the discard pile uh, once I sell him gems. Okay, so pretty innocuous. And a lodestone, cursed. You must take the lodestone. It counts as two objects for your carrying limit. If you visit the alchemist in the city, you may discard the lodestone to gain one gold, or I can alchemize it. We're going to en encounter both of these things. I have to take that object. I am going to uh, alchemize all objects, and it is going to be instantly the lodestone. And that's going to give me a gold. Yeah, that's nice. That is the, the good thing about being the alchemist. Bingo, bango. I am, like, sitting on a pile of gold right now. Uh, unfortunately, though, my guy has not increased in, uh, in craft or strength. Now you'll see, guys, we're at 45 minutes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to ramp it up here. You, you have kind of an idea of what's going on here. And as you just kind of watch it, you will you will get an idea of how it goes. So like five, five strength to, to six? No. Yeah. If you're defeated, in addition to losing one life, the rock drops you in the mountain pass. He's going for the reroll, making it a standoff. Lucky bastard. All right, I am pushing my way to the Eagle's Eyrie. And that is where the uh, the Eagle King lives. And I'm going to have to try to smash him apart with my... Huh. With my flail. All right, a little scary here. We got three cards to draw. Opal, not bad. Free to carry a wyvern. Strength five. This foul creature has made its lair here. It will remain here until it is killed. Leprechaun. The leprechaun will remain here for the rest of the game. Roll one, die, and uh, I don't have any faith, and I'm going to have to actually roll that. There's not much I can do. We're going to have to continue. I'm going to have to fight the wyvern. We fight the wyvern first, then we'll encounter the leprechaun. I am definitely going to use the flail. That is the great equalizer. Give me big rolls. Big rolls. Nine. Plus two is 11. Boom. Kills the wyvern. Destroys him with the flail. The flail, guys, is so OP'd. It's not even funny. We're going for the big roll. Not a one. Yes. Yes. Oh, look how much gold we're getting, guys. Let's roll it up. Let's roll it up. Big numbers. Big numbers. Not a two. That's all. I can't really influence it. So we're going to get two bucks off the leprechaun. And we get the opal. And if I go visit the alchemist in the city, you may discard the opal to gain a gold. Ah, but, wait a second. I am. I am the alchemist. So what we're going to do is we're going to alchemize uh, objects. So we're instantly going to get that out of our inventory here so nobody can steal it. Now, people can steal your gold. So I'm going to add that as a gold piece. I'm going to trade in my trophies because now I have seven points worth of strength cards. Actually, I have eight. But you only need... You only need seven, guys. Right now, I'm kind of losing out on one point. So, do you want to keep it or no? Not really. I'm going to cash in both of these. We're going to trade that for strength. You'll notice that my strength stat, the red uh, the red number there in the top left corner, has now moved up from two to three, making me much, much tougher. Okay, now we're back to the cat burglar in the uh, the main board section. This is called the, uh, the outer region. 
This is kind of like the gentle, the, the beginner's area. And draws an adventure card. Prophecy! Oh, that was a uh, very climatic, or anti-climatic, climatic, I guess, uh, the music. All right, he is going to get uh, two gold. Two gold in the cave. Uh, I want to see what is this prophecy event here. We are being, uh, we're under the auspices of this event for two rounds. Whenever any character encounters a space with instructions to draw one or more adventure cards, they must draw one more card than required. After two rounds, the prophecy is fulfilled. Uh-oh. So, I am in a really hard area, guys. Um, so, it is not uncommon to draw, like, three three cards here. Two cards, that would be three. Ice bridge, I fall off. That could be four cards. Ugh. Now, luckily, I can go backwards or forwards. Let's just go for the mighty roll. And uh, I roll a one. Waterfall. I get to either heal a life, replenish one fate, gain a spell if your craft allows, which it does, or I can draw two cards on the cliff. And that would actually make me stronger. I wouldn't mind getting the fate points, though. Or even the spell. Spells can really, really screw up a lot of people. I'm going to go for the two cards. We're going to move, uh, we're going to move over to here. Over to the cliff. Boop. Now we get to draw two adventure cards. There's the first one. Icy Path. Oh, no. The Icy Path will remain here for the rest of the game. Roll a die. Oh, if I roll a six, I get uh, I get two turns. And a frost giant. Uh-oh. A titanic frost giant is lumbering around this area. He will remain here until he's killed while we're definitely going to uh, encounter. Now, again, because of the numbers in the in the, in the bottom right corner of the pictures of each card, the, the lower the number, the first, th those are your encounter orders. So you have to encounter the lowest number first. Thus, the frost giant is protecting the icy path. So we have to uh, encounter... The uh, ice, the, uh, the frost giant. I'm going to use my flail. It allows me to roll two combat dice in combat instead of one, and I get to add them. Bingo, bingo. Seven plus three is my normal strength is ten. Six plus three is a fucking win. I ended up felling the frost giant, and he goes into my trophy pile. Now I have to encounter the icy path. Hopefully I'm not this fucking guy here that's sliding down the path. Who wants to be on the icy path up in the cliffs? Not me. Two. Move three spaces counterclockwise. Okay. Oh. Back to the cliffs. Another cliff. And I, because it is a new area, I have to draw two more, two more cards. Ring of protection. If you're defeated in battle or psychic combat, you may discard the ring of uh, the ring instead of losing a life. And a mountain dragon. These things are getting worse. Before you engage the dragon in battle, it makes a breath attack. Roll it. Uh, one die. If the result is equal to or higher than your craft, I lose a life. All right. Equal or higher. So I need... Uh, uh, okay, we're going to go on with the flail. This is for the breath attack. Low, low, low. Okay. All right. So his breath attack does not succeed. Now we're going for the dice. Big doubles. Big doubles. Fuck. Oh, it's a 12. I don't have a, uh, a light fate point that I can use to influence uh, one of those dice rolls, which would have been a good roll. I would have, like, re-rolled the two. Instead, I've got to suck it. Suck it up. I'm going to take a point worth of damage. He wins. Uh, he ends up guarding... Uh, what, what was he sitting on? He, the Ring of Protection, ironically. So, I lose a point of life. That's okay. I'm down to four life. That is my green number that's just kind of flashed. That ends my turn. That's okay. I can go back at any point in time, kill the dragon again. And now, I because I rolled a one, I get to roll the reaper. And uh, I'm going to move him away because I do not want him landing on me. When you play with multiple people, uh, more than three, basically more than two people, two people is a fast, little, concise game. I should be able to get this done maybe in, let's say, three hours. Like, no shit, it's a long game. Could be a lot quicker. Um, but if you start playing with, like, four, five, six people... That Grim Reaper becomes an absolute chaos uh, tool. It's just, it's terrible to in place. It ra rains here for the rest of the game. It gets to roll a, ooh, if you roll a one, that's really bad. Two, attacked by a white and a craft of four. That's not bad. The Cat Burglar has a craft of five innately. So th 
it automatically has a plus one advantage there. So one die, four plus five is nine, and he needs a five to tie, and that's a fail. Now, because it is a random uh, rolled creature, you don't get to keep that as a trophy. So it's just kind of like, it's an opportunity to get hurt, and if you suck, you suck. But you're not really gaining anything from it. We are going to do the mighty dice roll, and another one. Okay, that prophecy is not in effect anymore. We can go to the hills. I'm going to go to the waterfall. We're going to travel here. Now I am going to gain a spell or I can replenish a fate. Now I've only got dark points, which allow me to influence my opponent's rolls, not my own. I need light fate for that. That is the lighter purple uh, right beside the, uh, the health indicator. Right now, I'm considered dark bound. So anything, uh, especially the Woodslands creatures, uh, deal all in the in the in the uh, in the the light brown and and uh, dark bound. Simulcrum. Cast on yourself when you're about to engage in battle or psychic combat. Resolve the attack as normal, except that if your attack score is less than your opponent's, you are not defeated, and the attack is considered a standoff instead all right fair enough um that i don't need to queue up and i do if you'll notice i still have this queued up waiting for the cat burglar to cast the spell that in turn will give me all my uh all my shit back right if you uh check out the details i am dark bound the the effect of that fate is cancelled, and that character loses all of their fate. Oh, it loses. I don't gain any. But it, they'll, they'll lose everything. That's just perfect. All right. I'll keep that uh, lined up, and the other one is Simulcrum. So if I need to fight against, let's say, the dragon, I could, right, without taking a life. Okay. Uh, roll the dice for the Reaper. Give me a high number. I want him out of my zone. I need to get him over to here, away from me. Get him closer towards the cat burglar. Now, the Grim Reaper would have to totally run through all the route that I'm going through right now. So, good luck with that. Succubi. Defeats you in uh, psychic combat. In addition to losing life, you must also lose one craft. Oh, that's a win. <laughs> That is a win. Uh, he could have re-rolled. And he's going for the re-roll. Now, I'm I'm debating why I am not allowed to re-roll that. I, why can't I re-roll his re-roll? All right, we are going to go to the precipice. Wonderful. Draw an adventure card, a rune gate. On your next turn, instead of your normal move, you may teleport to any other face-up rune gate or any rune's space. Once the rune gate has been used, it vanishes into the discard pile. So we'll leave that there. At any point in turn, in the future, we can come back and use that. Um, where are you going? Now, if you land on a space that already has a card, you are not able to draw the new card. No, he's going to get a bounty here. Oh, he's going to cash that in. Four gold. He's got six gold now. Everyone's got gold. The city, that is one thing that the city kind of brings to the table. It's a, it's a gold generator. Ooh. Ooh. I could do... I could do another run. I could go back, get some fate, then um, then I can run. Oh, you know what? We're going to do that. I'm going to do that. Uh, I know it seems a little counterproductive. I'm going to replenish the fate, though, uh, and, and it's going to be a light. And he's going to go for a cruise through the city. He does have to follow the way through the city right now. I was explaining this to my friend uh, last night. Uh, she's never actually seen the board, but as soon as I described it to her, she already had it in, in uh, exactly, she knew what I was talking about. I'm like, yeah, like the city is fast, you can only go in one direction, but you could do three loops compared to uh, me even getting halfway through the, the highlands, for instance, right? 
super fast. Okay, uh, give me a good roll. Guild rolls. Four. We're back to the precipice. Okay, let's hope for uh, something good. We are going to go there. Give me something good. Give me a monster. Not too tough, though. Narrow path. The narrow path will remain here for the rest of the game. Roll one die for yourself and one for each of your followers. On a one or a two, that is really, really bad shit, man. Um, boo. All right, one for myself. Ah, oh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to bite it. That is, that is my one hit point. Now I've got two followers. Uh, for the haggler, haggler's safe. Panhandler, panhandler's safe. All right, so we got through the uh, the narrow. Oh fuck. All right, the Fez is safe. The Fez was the only thing that I'm really fucking uh, concerned about. All right, so the narrow path we just barely squeezed through. No one fell to their depth. Super awesome. Okay, they're in the high temple, are you? Where are you going now? Catburger. Cut the thread. They're trying to use... Uh, yes, they are trying to use the fate point, which is firing off. Cut the thread. That's going to cause them to lose all their, all their fate. That's tough titties for him. Tough titties. Now he's rolling the, uh, he's rolling for the Reaper. He's trying to come to me, because why not? I mean, I would too. And three. Oh shit, here we go, guys. This is a, a three card draw. Let's pull those cards. Magic Helmet, nice. Dragon's Teeth, nice. Hippogriff, nice, and it's weak. Weak, weak, weak. So. Hippogriff's coming in. We're using the flail. We are going to give it the double smackaroonie. Give me doubles here. All right, that's five plus uh, it's eight. And to it's seven. Just barely, barely a win. But I will take it. And, uh, yeah, if you're defeated in battle and just lost a life, roll a die. If I roll a five or a six, I will uh, avoid taking a, a point of damage. If you get a regular helmet, guys, it only protects on a six. But Because this is the magic helmet, right? One third of the time, it will actually uh, absorb the damage. I'm going to wear that. Dragon's Teeth. Um, you may discard the teeth. When you are about to engage in battle, roll one die and add the result to your attack score. We can do that right now when we go and fight the fucking Eagle King. Okay. And we're going to trade in these trophies. This is great. So again, a six and a two is, uh, is eight. You only need seven to advance... But I'm going to do that. My strength is now four. I have now moved up from my initial starting uh, value strength score of from two to four. So I am getting stronger and stronger, which is going to allow me to get to the middle of the board. All right. So the middle of the board, the crown of command is where the end of the game is going to take place. And we will see where that's going to be, hopefully, in the next hour. These games are long, guys. Even on the box, it says uh, it takes 90 to 120 minutes. Now, he's at the, uh, the wizard's cave. He is selecting a um, wizard's quest. It was the give up a magic item. He did. He's now got a talisman that allows him to get into the middle section. Like I was just saying, guys, the, the cock. The, the, the crown of command here in the middle. Uh, the only way you can get in there, if you look at this, you must have a talisman to enter the Valley of Fire. If you don't have a talisman, tough titties, you better turn around or go straight or whatever you're doing, but you don't, don't stay here. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Got to get the hell out until you get a talisman. Now, there is a house rule, and it's called the Talisman Bloodbath, and that is where there is only one talisman ever allowed in the game. <laughs> and you can imagine... You don't want, if you're a weak character, you probably don't want to be running around with a talisman. It's, it does change the game subtly. Let's get back to our role. Uh, and I am going to move in, and we are going to fight the Eagle King. Okay. I am going to battle him. We are going to use the flail. I'm going to use the also the magic helmet. And now I can use the dragon's teeth. That will allow me to roll a d6. Add it to my strength. I'm going to absolutely annihilate this guy. Give me a high roll. That's all right. 
All right, I'll stick with that. So I've now got a seven. So I'm almost equal to his strength, but I get to roll two dice. That is a win. That is a win, my friends. That's going to allow me to grab the Highland Trophy. There's a Highland Trophy. There's only really one or two that are really good. And it's it's probably one of the better ones, Dreadwing. Uh, it's a follower. I get to roll two dice and add them together to determine how far you move. If you roll the same result on both dice for your move, you may teleport to any space in the same region instead. Super, super fast. He's coming with me. Uh, so again, um, <clears throat> it's reset this. They did they did just recently patch it. So my tutorial and all my level is set, but relic cards are treated in all respects like adventure cards once they are in the character's possession, except that they if they must be discarded, they are removed from the game instead of being placed in the discard pile. Big difference because you can pull things from the discard pile. Or if you run out, the discard pile is actually reshuffled back into the game. All right, now I get to move anywhere on the board uh, because obviously I'm at the top of the, the mountain or the tour. And uh, yeah, so I am going to be, I think, deposited here in the fields where I get to draw an adventure card. It's a rock, uh, ironically enough. It must have followed me from the... Uh, the top of the hill there we are going to use the flail once again the flail guys and the magic helmet i am fucking loaded for bear uh despite being yeah yeah even on a even on a six it would have just tied with me excellent so again that's more and more trophies i'm good with that so went to the, the planes and i guess it swooped down and still wants a piece of me it remembers uh it's it's king now, spells are super useful, guys. All right. That there, my friends, was a uh, Mephistopheles. It will, um, it will basically uh, turn you evil. And now we've got an evil cat burglar on the field. I'm going to roll the dice. I am going into the woodlands. I'll explain to you a little bit about how the woodlands works here. So, yeah, we're just going to go one, two, three. We're going to go to the glade. Uh, let me check out my equipment here. As you can see, guys, it can get pretty... Oh, I should have used my bird. Oh, well, we'll go into the glade. Sometimes you don't want to use Dreadwing. So now I've got options here. Do I want a destiny at the end of this journey? Yeah, I do. Now, can I can I do it? Okay, the clear path is just basically free sailing. It'll allow you to get through uh, this section pretty, pretty quick. But at the end, you are not able to gain a destiny. You can simply move to any space, not in the woodland or inner region, which is huge. Any space on the board. It's something to keep in mind if you want to just run that path of fortune when you roll a five a four five or six for movement you may gain a gold when you reach the meeting with destiny space you may pay five gold to gain a destiny well fuck me why wouldn't you choose that that's so easy at the start of your turn if you do not have a spell you may draw one spell if your craft allows when you reach the meeting with destiny space fight queen mab in psychic combat she has a craft of six if you defeat her, draw three spells and discard down to your spell limit. But it does not give you a destiny card. The only one that's going to give me a destiny card I had is that. And all I'm going to do is, is gain gold. I've already got enough gold to, to meet the conditions. Okay, what do I, if I, if anything... Do I want to... All these creatures I could beat the absolute crap out of. Maybe not that. The, the craft creatures I gotta be a little careful of. Oh, yeah, I gotta be really careful of landing on that square. You know what I should do? I should grab her. 
Use your fate instead of your craft when in psychic combat with her. Oh, which was three for me. E. E. Oh, man. Um, I'm going to continue. I'm going to draw an adventure card. It's the Fairy Godmother. This kindly fairy will make sure your destiny is set before moving on to the discard pile. Oh, and because I am dark bound, guys, I gain one strength and one dark fate. Nice! Nice! I would have I would have liked a, a craft. My guy is a crafty person to begin with. I love this game, guys. I love it. I love it. And it gets better with all the expansions. It is a long game, though. You can just imagine sitting here playing this with your buddies. Uh, you know, already we're like an hour into uh, drinking. Uh, and uh, it, the more you drink, the, the harder this game gets, actually. So That fucking Reaper's coming. Now, do I want to use Dreadwing? Yes, I do. I don't really, really want to be farting around with the Reaper coming up behind me. Um, so we are just going to roll the double dice. Oh, fuck. What is here? I'm going to attack him. Yeah, we're going to move uh we're going to move on to the Fomorian. Okay. Uh no no worries there. We are going to encounter him now. He is He's tough. But I'm going to use my flail and the magic helmet. I could e even use the simulcrum, to be honest. Pretty confident I should be able to beat this guy, though. Not with a roll like that, though. I'm going to re-roll that die. Give me a high number. Fuck me. Fuck me. All right, I'm taking the hit. Magic helmet, give me a five or a six. Okay, that uh, saves me from taking a point of damage. Nice, okay. Well, that's the breaks. If I killed him, I would have ended up getting uh, a strength point. I would have been now at six strength, right? This is what you want. This is how you how you want to advance your character into the game because you're going to need at least a 10 uh, craft or strength to get into the center, and uh, you'll see exactly how that works because I'm going to play this right to the end. I probably should have used the bird again, but let's go nice and slow. Let's see what we can draw here. Give me something good. A slog. Craft for this. Dark Fae is traveling the land, seeking the souls of the innocent to carry with it to damnation. If you are defeated by the slog, um, I am dark. Kill one of your followers. Oh, it's better than light, that which is kill all of your father followers. Fuck. All right. Um, it's going to be, again, even Steven. Should I? I'm going to use the simulcron. I'm going to use this. I don't feel like taking a point of damage here. Fuck. Oh. All right, so I don't take a point, which is good. Oh, it's considered a standoff. Well, that was fortunate. Good. Now that guy stays on the board. He's always going to be there. Oh, it's a standoff because I had the uh, Simulcrum. Oh, that's a nice card. Now, because I'm not a proper spellcasting character, I'm not able to just replenish my spells. I have to actually actively look for them. Uh, AKA, I can go to the city and buy them. Um, there's other places you can get them as well. Uh, that comes with experience. Ah, shit, I should use the bird again. Instead, though, what do we got here? What is this? It looks like... Uh, a forest goat. Oh my god. Well, let's go there. We're gonna, and that should actually get me a trophy now that I think about it. We're gonna continue. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, I think this is an auto kill, is it not? Uh huh. Sacrificed. And I get to trade in trophies because the rock and the forest goat. Or we're seven points. Now I've got a six strength, a four craft. Things are going well for me, my friends. I 
so well, in fact, that I should probably start flying. You know, I, I, I shouldn't be wandering so blithely through the uh, the woodlands. It's a, it's a scary place. What do we got here? What do you, you fucking just swap or something with me, you son of a bitch? Ooh. I've got four dark, though, now. Oh, <laughs> fuck me. All right, we are going to, uh, we're going to use our bird. Thank you very much. Roll the double dice. Wow, yeah, we can fly. We can fly all over the board. We are going to the thickets where we get to uh, we get to draw two cards. Now, look at the trees, guys. They, it is awesome, like the way it changes. Like now there's faces on the trees. And then eventually when you get into the deep dark woods, the faces are a little more ominous and, and things change. It is, it's, I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's a new adventure every time. That reminds me of something that was supposed to be sent to somebody. It was a, a little uh, bird bath. All right. Rasalka. An enemy, a fey. Strength five. The Rasalka drowns her victims in swift running rivers during battle with the Rasalka. Add two to your strength if I am uh, dark bound, which I am. You're going to get absolutely destroyed. You better have a friend. And they do. The Puka. Another fae, the clever Puka, is a bringer of both good fate and bad. She is causing much mischief in the area. Ah, she's going to make me lose a fate. All right, make me lose a fate. I'm going to get a flail. I'm still dark bound, so whatever. I get uh, plus two to my strength. That's a great roll. 17. Good luck, my friends. Good luck. Boom. Both dead. Both in my pocket. Thank you very much. Now, that's not enough to get a trophy. I think I need, uh, what, one more point? Yeah, I need one more point. Or I could go to the academy and and tr trade in that other craft creature I have sitting around. But that's that'd be kind of stupid. That actually worked out really good. There's the portal of power. That's what you need to get through. You can see the rules at the bottom of how to do it, how to get through. You can pause it, guys. Read that. That's really important. It's how you're going to get to the middle. This person is not going to the middle, though. They are going to the hills where they're going to draw a card. It's a healer. And they will heal you up to your uh, full comp complement of health. I'm going to roll the dice with the help of Dreadwing once again. Because we, we don't want to spend a lot of time in here, guys. I don't want to get uh, some card that where I'm losing my gold. That is the fucking one of the worst rolls ever. Hey, I thought when I rolled doubles, I got to, I got to choose. If you roll the same results on both die for your move, you may teleport to any space in the same region instead. I don't know why it's it's I should technically be I did I rolled a double double once I should be able to technically teleport in any region um, I'm gonna have to uh, probably send this in let's see if what they think is possibly a, a bug and why is this flashing can I use let's use oh Oh, yeah. Well, 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 well. I'm kind of liking fighting these creatures, though. Okay, so, okay, the rules are still there. Um, now. Oh, I could get right to the... I'm going to go right to the end and get that Destiny. Meeting with Destiny. I'm going to pay them the five gold. Oh, and all these trinkets. I'm going to take it, take it, and take it. And the Path of Fortune is now uh, fulfilled. 
And this is my destiny card, guys. This stays with you uh, even if your character dies, right? Because this game is overarching. It's not just one character. It's supposed to uh, span an epic of time. You know what I mean? Uh, so if you die, then you re you're kind of reincarnated into another body and you kind of still have the same destiny and stuff. So this is going to increase my craft value by one. It's going to increase my fate value by one. And when another character successfully casts a spell, I get to replenish one Dark Fate. That doesn't really matter much because the Cat Burglar isn't a spell caster. Um, whenever another character casts a spell, I can spend uh, one Dark Fate to negate the effects of the spell. And not bad. Not bad. And now I go back to the forest again. Give me a sex. Oh, I got lost? Yeah, I got lost, my friends. Nope. Nope. I'm attacked by a brigand. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Run away, Shattered. Run away. Can you withstand such, such magnitude of strength? Oh, my God. I'm just a knight 18. This guy's just like, oh, my God. I turn around, and of course I look as resplendent, but I'm wearing a magic helmet. Oh, incredible. Ready to alchemize your ass into gold. And that, unfortunately, guys, is my turn. I could now, what, what could I do? Uh, I've pretty much done everything I needed to do. I still probably should do another run around uh, one, of these, one of these places. Uh, maybe I'll go buy some spells. Maybe I should get into the inner region here, uh, the middle region where the cat burglar is pack of wolves strength two shouldn't have any problems Ooh, they get to roll two dice good luck with that oh i guess uh yeah they roll two and get to select the highest cat burglar takes one point of life all right so that is the ai second character i am still on uh player number one uh, I am getting my alchemist is becoming a very tough person here. Now, I'm going to use Dreadwing. Man, I love having all this stuff here. I'm going to use Dreadwing. That will allow us to roll two dice for movement. Let's roll the dice. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? The world is our oyster. What do we got over here? I forgot what was over here. Something that I think at the time was scary. And it's no longer scary. It's a cave. Yeah, no, we don't want to go there. I could do another run through through the woodlands. I'm going to go over here. Uh, we're just going to go over to the fields, and that's going to draw a one card. Look at that. So flying on the back of my giant eagle that I got from defeating the um, Eagle King. All right. Um, yeah, let's just draw a card. A demon. Oh, that's tough. A demon has appeared from the underworld to cause chaos in this area. It will remain here until it is killed. Well, I have to fight it. I can't really run. So the alchemist is now going up against the demon. Uh, now we're comparing craft. Uh, it has definitely got me uh, against the ropes. <laughs> I, even a six is like, yeah. Oh, man, it's just smacked me into the ground. Get out. All right, <laughs> I'm done. That's a point of damage. I'm down to two life now, guys. I've, I've got to be careful because, you know, at any point in time, the cat burglar could jump on me. There could be a dragon that I can't, uh, you know, I can't handle. Let's see what we can alchemize here. Any objects here that we can get rid of? I've got a lot of stuff here, like this love potion. I'm going to alchemize this, and that's going to get me another gold. The, the love potion depends upon you actually landing on another character. There's just not enough people. There's, I, I, there's no way I'm hunting down the cat burglar just to land on them, right? No way. Last night I was playing against a troll character that had like a 15 strength. The thing would get near me, I'd start running away because at any point in time it could jump me. It was a great game. It was a wicked game. All right, uh, once again, I think I'm going to fly into the city. We're going to use Dreadwing. That's going to allow us to use two dice for movement. 
Doubles, doubles. Oh, doubles allows me to choose any square in the region. Now, I do not want to just stay in this region. I want to actually fly into the city. But wait, hold it. What is this thing over here? That's that, uh, that's the demon, or no, no, what is this? It's a rock? Oh, I'm going to go kill that. Hells yeah, let's go over there. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I am going to, uh, select my bird again, because I rolled doubles, I'm going to use the card. It's going to allow me to now choose any area in the region, because I rolled doubles. Perfect, right? As you'll note, though, it's not allowing me to go into there anymore. So I'm going to go onto the rock card. We are going to uh, travel to that area. Nice. Now, I could go over to the temple guy. There's a whole bunch of areas that you could go to, all little nifty squares. Obviously, the longer you play the game and you know what each square does, uh, it, this game becomes way better. Once you're not worried about what each, each individual tile space does, the game becomes absolutely incredible. We're going to fight the rock with the flail, with the magic uh, helmet for maximum outputage. 7 plus 7 is 14. Absolutely stomped his ass into the ground, quite literally, because it was flying. That should give us enough trophies now. So what we're going to do, we're going to cash in all our strength trophies up to a value of... Oh, I've got a really good idea, guys. Up to a value of 7. You'll see here, if I cash in these two, uh, that will be 10. I'm going to be wasting 3 points. Instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these 3 for a total of 14. I'm going to cash in 2. Where am I going to do that? How are you going to do that, Shattered? I'm going to go over to here. I'm going to go into the city and right here... In the academy, received training. You may discard seven points of trophies of your choice. I'm just going to instantly go in there, get two points of my choice, probably put it into craft, so then we'll be a six-seven character. So anyways, that's next turn, if, if nothing happens. I mean, this game, there's so much chaos. Somebody can teleport you onto the other side of the map. This game, guys, if you got to have a really good sense of humor when you're playing it, because your friends are going to piss you off, man. <laughs> Master of Fate. Oh, 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 oh. All right, here we go. Uh, now we can just read what these cards are. Master of Fate. It has been left to you to decide the fate of the world. All characters gain either one dark fate or one light fate. You choose which type of fate each character gains, then discard the, the card. Closed shop. Business is bad. All face-up places on the board. Close up shop and pack off to the discard pile. I'm not sure how that's going to affect us. And an object, the golden statue. You have uncovered a valuable relic. The golden statue may be discarded at the city for two gold or at the castle for four gold. If you lose an attack against another character, they must take the golden statue instead of their normal reward, which would be good if you want to be an asshole. You can run up to somebody, even if you get, even if you get hit, then they have to take this bloody thing, and they can't steal, let's say, your, your talisman from you, which is uh, normally what they could do. All right, so it is first take the object. Really, you shouldn't be able to take the object until you uh, resolve this here. What are you giving me there, bro? Another dark fate. Oh, you son of a bitch! And I couldn't collect it. I've already maxed out my dark uh, my my fate. I am absolutely dark bound right now with a, a full fate complement. Uh, meanwhile, buddy is dark bound too, but he's only got uh, he's only got one dark fate and again you can go check out the characters look all their special abilities the more adventure packs the the more expansion packs you guys get you get like a ton of new characters and stuff a ton of new endings alternate endings super super awesome okay uh enough talking we are going to go and use the bird once again we're going to fly because we want to get right to that academy we don't want to be getting lost in the city or getting jumped by thieves and getting our gold stolen because that shit happens so we're going to fly in. Oh, impressive. Again, I could teleport anywhere on the inner region, but we're not going to bother. That roll is going to allow us to get directly to the academy. 
in one mighty, one mighty swoop. Is that, is that the eagle I hear? Dreadwing? There you are, brother. That's right. And now we're going to spend all our points here. We're going to spend 14 points. I hope it's going to allow me to, to cash them all in. One. Two. That's 14. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to get a craft. No, 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 no. No. Um, that is going to be a reload, guys. Fuck that. That's okay. It only takes two seconds to reload. Boom. And boom. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, uh, it, it's unforgiving. If you make a mistake in the digital version, sometimes, man, you just got to suck it up. I'm not willing to suck that up. Fuck that. Now... Let's see. <laughs> Let's see if we get the same roll. That would be interesting if we do. Not even close. Not even close. That's okay, though. Whatever. Uh, that will give us another chance to get uh, maybe another encounter here. Hopefully I don't get thrown in jail, though. Charity, an event. The character with the most gold must give one gold to the character with the least gold. If there's a tie, oh man. Okay, this is what I mean. Like, I don't want to get nickeled and dimed. You want to get to where you're going fast. If you want to spend gold, you got to spend it, man. Or it's, you may not have it, like, next turn. It's, trust me, like there. Damn it. Uh, I am going to end my turn. We're going to see if we can do that transmutation again, but I'm not going to put in so many points this time. It should have given me both of those. Not not impressed with that. Maybe there's rules. Maybe I didn't read them right. All right, the pixie. It's a follower. You don't have to roll when you're in the woods. And uh, we once again... I am going to roll both dice. I'm going to use Dreadwing, in other words, because uh, if I don't, I'll probably roll a fucking Snake Eyes. Now, I could roll snake eyes here too, but at least I'd still be able to uh, teleport anywhere I wanted. Three. <laughs> That's exactly what I need. One, two, three. Okay, back to the academy. You may discard seven points of trophies to gain your choice of one strength. Okay, all right. So, we're going to go in. Now, I'm not going to give up all 14 points, obviously. I would do something along the lines of... Uh, Like, five and nine, right? And then I'm going to grab one craft. And then I'll still have the other things left over. For some reason, it seemed like they used up the, the other guys. That's good. I'm okay with that. We'll go back and, uh, I don't know, we'll run around the city and kill some city fucking rats or something, you know? Or some, like, some cut purses. Actually, there's the city guard, too. We can fucking beat the shit out of. <laughs> Flying carpet! Ooh, what does he got? Fly, if you roll a six for your move, you may teleport to any other space in this region instead of moving normally. Now, that is an item that you might want to look at your buddy at and go, that's a really nice item. <laughs> Maybe it would look really good rolled up and on the back of my backpack, that magic flying fucking carpet. Um, is there any objects here that I can alchemize? The whetstone, the helmet, uh, no, those are all good. All really good stuff. We are uh, definitely not going to alchemize anything. I could change the gold into potions and stuff. Actually, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to alchemize uh, to heal the life. So one gold for one life. And we're going to do that again. This is why the alchemist is super powerful, guys. You are basically a walking, uh, walking shop of just gold generation and, and health. Like, you don't have to go anywhere to heal. You can do it all on your own. You can even get fate back, I believe. Oh, you can gain spells? F 
Fuck me. Summon Stormcrow. Uh, all right. That's okay. Oh, now, now I'm doing okay. We're going to use uh, Dreadwing once again. Uh, and we're going to roll the doubles. Hopefully. Nine. Now, do I want to buy stuff? Now, what's really good about uh, the digital version over the uh, the tabletop version, instantly right here, you can see right there in the info boxes uh, exactly what you can buy. And when you're when you're playing the table, like the actual board game guys, you need to have this knowledge. This is all like knowledge that you, you you're kind of expected to know. Other than that, you're gonna have to go through all their little little uh, stacks of piles and see what you can get. Obviously, the flail is super good. Plate full plate is really good. I just saw something here though. We've got the riding horse. We've got a horse and cart, guys. The fucking horse and cart. Pardon my French. We're gonna go in there, and I'm gonna grab the horse and cart. And that's going to leave me with a gold left, but we're going to leave the city like kings. Here we go. Into the store. Look at that. Beautiful. What are we going to do? Horse and cart for five bucks. We can get a war horse. All these things are good. All these things are super good. We've got a mule, which the follower doubles your, uh, your objects, right? But the horse and cart, you're allowed to carry an extra eight objects. If you lose the horse and cart, though, you must leave any surplus objects of your choice in the space you are in. So caveat emptor. But we're taking it. Because now I am basically uh, an absolute monster. I should be able to wrap up this game in the next 45 minutes, I'd say. Absolutely. Now, depending on who you play with, they can be ex exceptionally aggressive. My buddy, uh, for one, it doesn't matter. He's, he's a total gambler. He'll, he'll try to go for the end game when he's only got like uh, maybe seven or eight strength and craft. I'm like, you're crazy. You're crazy. Over time, you're not going to do it. Statistically, you're not going to be able to get in there that often. But he still takes the chance every time. And uh, for some reason, he fucking he wins. <laughs> so maybe it is all about taking those chances. Meanwhile, I am just going to roll the dice. Let's get out of the city. I, like I said, I don't need to be here. Now, I could run into the uh, the Rogues Guild really quickly, see if I could earn a quick, uh, quick piece of gold. But I need to roll a five or a six. Yeah, let's just do it. Now, you got to, you got to, you got to think. Do I would I rather spend my time visiting the Guildmaster here? And getting a piece of gold or not like I just did or would it be better spent moving on to another uh, open play space and then drawing an adventure card potentially meeting a monster potentially getting stronger uh, that's up to you gold is really good in this game depending on sometimes the card setup especially when you have the city the city it's really good Lord of the pit that's an 8 creature. And funny enough, actually it's a 10-10 creature in Magic the Gathering, isn't it? The Lord of the Pet? I think it is. I'm pretty sure it's not 8-8. Eight, eight. Oh, the Cat Burglar is getting hit for 1 point of damage. Now, if that was another player attacking, you, you can either hit them for a life, you can take an object, or you can take a gold. Right? By default, the computer automatically just takes uh, a life from you. All right. Do I want to do another lap around uh, the city? No. Where do I want to go? I want to get to the inner region here. Maybe I should start picking on the cat burglar. Ah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go for another lap around the city. Fly over to Royal Lane. Man, I feel like this is uh, like World of Warcraft right now. For the Alliance! Flying in on my eagle <laughs> in the White City. It's awesome. I love it. So this here is the extension. Uh, let's draw that adventure card. Yeah, it's the extension. Can I, can I actually move that? I can't move it, can I? 
Ooh, a city rat. Just like I was saying, guys. Let's uh, ooh, encounter that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Now, the thing is, I could get thrown in jail. We're going to auto-kill it, obviously. Uh, does that give me enough to trade in a trophy? It sure does. That's why I wanted to do the lap around, guys. There's my seven points right there. One, uh, five, six, and seven. And we'll trade that for strength. We are now a seven, six fighting machine. A monster, really. Um, getting there. Getting there. And we'll fly out of the city right quickly. And maybe even take out that Lord of the Pet. We'll show, we'll show them the cat burglar how it's done. Oh, off to the oasis. Get to draw two cards here. There's a gnome, which is good, and a mage. Now, I need to generate uh, more gold. The gnome, yeah, the gnome's good. That will help you in the end game. Uh, when you're running through the middle section there, there is things that, uh, like right over here, uh, in particular, like the gnomes uh, will help you get through here. There's a hidden, hidden ending. That's where we're headed. We got to get through the portal of power first. So it starts off in the outer region. Then your middle region is a little bit tougher. The, uh, the inner region, you only move one square at a time and each square has its, uh, its own little uh, nuance. Now, keep in mind that you do need a talisman to actually enter the uh, Valley of Fire. There's no way you can get into the cock without it. And yes, it's the crown of command. Um, let us use the bird again. Fly like an eagle. <whistles> All right, eight. Not a bad roll. Uh, now I have one gold piece left. I could buy a stiletto. And no, I could buy a scroll. I could buy another spell. I could just alchemize this stuff too, though. You know what I mean? I could pray. Uh, what is armory? Or we could go to Rats Road. Let's go check out Rats Road. And it is. Look at we have got rats all on Rats Road. That's hilarious. I love it. All right, let's uh, let's travel there. Incoming. Make way for the royalty, the great alchemist Shattered Civ. All right, now we get to continue. Draw an adventure card from the city adventure card deck, Temporal Mage. You may pay three gold to take three successive turns before play passes to the next player. Once a character has done so, discard this card. Well, well, that sucks. Guess who doesn't have three gold? Oh, brother. Oh, brother, that is a really good card. This guy's still in the Oasis. That's a big roll. He's going to use his flying carpet. Now he gets to move anywhere he wants. Over to the healer. Wow. That guy's going to heal you up for free? Hang on. Let's, uh, we got to make sure we know what these cards are on the board. Very, very important at times. Show cards. The healer has made his home here for the rest of the game. He will heal up to two lives per visit. Free a charge. I need to get I need to kill that somehow. Oh, you know what I could do? I could use my my Fez. I could use that Fez to drag him right over to me. That's an advanced tactic, though. We're not going to worry about that for now. Okay, where the hell am I? Still in the city? Um, do I want another gold piece? I might want another chance at a gold piece. I should really get out, though. I need to fight creatures here. Um, sorry, I'm kind of kind of up in the air. Okay, we're going to go with a bird. It's going to allow us to roll doubles. I'm, oh, the wharf. On your next turn, instead of moving normally, move to any space in the outer or middle region. Oh, that means I wouldn't even have to fight the sentinel. I'm going to do that. I'm going to walk in there. We're going to spend a gold. 
And guys, trust me, getting across into the middle region from the outer region on the main board, it's not as easy as it sounds. All right, we're going to end our turn. Because <clears throat> you have to, right there, where south of where the uh, the cat burglar is, there's a thing, it's the sentinel. You cross that, it's a 9-9 nine -nine creature that you got to fight. And he's just zipping around all over the place. Picking up all the good shit. A bandit, a saber-toothed tiger, and a devil. Oh, and he's evil, so he gets to gain a life. Now you're fighting uh, two creatures for eight. Oh, what did you do? Oh, he bribed He bribed the uh, the bandit. Oh, roll, fucking bomb that dice roll. Oh, that's a loss, man. You're taking a hit. So much for that free health. Son of a bitch. I'm going to go in there now. Now, I've paid for uh, a ferry across here, so I'm going to be able to go pretty much anywhere on these two boards, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I think we do not have a talisman at the moment. I could even land here, rough this guy up, and take the talisman from them. I think, uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. We're going to travel there. Oh, the panhandler kicks in. So they have to automatically give me something. And I've got my, my horse and cart, too. Thank you very much. Now, she gets the panhandler. That's fine. Now, I'm going to encounter the character. Oh, I could trade an object. Is that is that either or? I think it is. During your turn, you may alchemize any gold you have into potions. For each gold you discard, you may plenish one fate. Alchemize gold. Okay, so that is not the effect that is happening there. I believe if I uh, were to guess, it's going to be one of these followers. The Haggler, you may trade with a character that you land on by exchanging any one object of yours for one object of theirs. Now, is there anything that I really want to get rid of? I don't know if I want to trade when I can just steal. Like, I'm just going to about to thump this guy. However, there may be items that I'm willing to uh, get rid of. I could give him the shovel back. Although that's not a bad item. The shovel? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to dismiss that. Let's just, uh, we're going to attack first. I'm going to use my flail. Yeah, so I'm going to use the magic helmet. This person's about to get an apps. This is your friend, Think, remember, guys. Like, oh, you can just imagine your friend's face right now. It's probably not very happy with you. <laughs> oh, my God. 16 to 4. <laughs> okay, now... I could steal a gold, I could take a life, or I could take an object. I'm not re-rolling, obviously, like, fuck, why? Okay, <laughs> I could even take the flying carpet. The magic belt wouldn't be bad. And then attack again. Now, I'm in the same region as uh, the cat burglar, so if at any time they roll a six, they'd be able to do the exact same thing I'm doing to them. For now, we're just going to take... Uh... You may choose to take one life from loser, take one object or one gold. Where's my other options here? Oh, I have to select the cat burglar. Okay, all right. No, we're going to take, uh, take the talisman. That way, I don't have to get my own. And now... The cat burglar doesn't have one. So I'm denying uh, access for the cat burglar to get in through the portal of power, which is that door just two spaces to our right. Now, it doesn't look like I am able to use... The haggler. I don't understand why. I guess that is the action. Okay, that's good to know. That's the type of things, guys, you got to be really careful when you're playing with your buds. All of a sudden, you got some rules, Nazi, and they're like, no, no, you're allowed to do it. No, you can't. And, you know, especially after you see I'm on hour and, and 50 minutes in the game. 
you've now you're you're at least into like four or five beers you know what i mean <laughs> things are getting a little crazy a little heated around the table okay so the cat burglar is instantly going back to um here the the warlock's cave getting a quest once the quest is fulfilled um you are able to uh get another talisman now you can understand if you have talisman bloodbath enabled where there's only one talisman ever you can understand how it gets a little little hairy because now people would be wanting to get after me because i'm the only one with the talisman so it's definitely if you want to turn it into more of a cutthroat game that's how you're going to do it we're going to go back i think oh i could do the exact same thing again should i land on the cat burglar Um, you know what? I wouldn't normally do this. I wouldn't do this to like a, a, a friend or a loved one, but the AI, I'll show you just how mean you can get. Yeah, we're going to do, uh, we're going to jump um, on top of him again. Just literally fall out of the sky with Dreadwing. Arr! Oh my God, no, right? <laughs> and we're going to attack uh, the Cat Burglar again. I'm not going to encounter the space. I do have the option. And we are going to battle once again. And I'm going to... Now, if I roll doubles here, you're not able... The opponent is not able to roll a dice at all. It's the, the flail is so overpowered. This combination of having the city, the alchemist, with the, the, Al the alchemist actually comes packaged with the city expansion. So it's used to, it, it's made to actually utilize uh, some of the core mechanics that are they're, they're bringing out. Uh, yeah, absolutely destroyed them again. I'm going to steal their magic belt now, <laughs> making them weaker. So they've got a three for a strength it is now going to drop to two and i oh i have to take this where did you get this from why didn't you give it to me that I, you have uncovered a value if you lose an attack against another character they must take the golden statue instead of their normal reward well where did you get that from why didn't you use it last time i'm okay with that i'll just alchemize it or i'll just go to the city for two gold perfect i'll go to the castle fuck it thanks I'll be back. I'm going to fly to the castle now. <laughs> now, cash it in, and then I'm going to come back and trounce you. And then you'll see, my pretty. All right, and uh, this area is not uh, not a great place to be wandering around when you're that low level. Uh, wants good good rolls there. Do I want to re-roll that? Yeah, I want to re-roll that. I want low numbers so she gets stuck there. Enslaved. Perfect. Perfect. Now she is actually enslaved in the temple. I used the dark point up for that. Uh, beautiful. Again, we're going to go for, we're going to use uh, Dreadwing. We're going to hope for the doubles. If we get the doubles, we can land right on her and attack her once again, even though she's enslaved. God, uh, this game can get really nasty. Other than that, though, if I don't get doubles, I'm going to pick the best of uh, the places here. Oh, look at that, guys. We can go right to the fucking castle. Are you kidding me? I wish I wish my real games would turn out like this, man, in the in the like when I'm playing against my friends. I had a couple games yesterday of this uh, here digitally and it was terrible, man. I was just I was making rolls and, and pulling up cards just like I do in real life. And it was so frustrating. Out of the three games I played, I won one. This one here, I'm uh, I'm on the path to success. It's a great character, though, the alchemist. This is the castle. Heal up to your life value at the cost of one gold each. And if you have a prince or princess, heal up to two lives for free. Now, in the base game, you do have the princess, you do have the, the prince. But it is so hard to land on these squares, guys, unless you have something to assist you. We're going to travel here, though. And we are going to cash in that... Uh, we're going to cash in that dude, the gold statue. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Yeah, we're going to go down. We're going to use it. Four, four bucks. Excellent. And uh, if I could heal, I could. But I can't. I'm going to see if there's anything that I can uh, alchemize. Any objects here. I don't think so. 
If I wanted to be, to be a prick, I could probably alchemize the uh, the talisman. Alright, I only have four objects here. All the rest are trinkets, and you can carry an unlimited amount of trinkets. I don't really want to get rid of anything, and uh, we're just going to end the turn. Let's see what happens. He's enslaved. He's going to miss his turn. Or he's going to try to roll again to get out? I thought you were enslaved. <clears throat> oh, stay here until you roll a 4, 5, or 6, which he just did. Fight! Uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to win, and uh, he's going to gain this as a trophy. Nice dice roll. All right, he still won. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna make him re-roll, and he still succeeds. Damn it! Damn it! I tried. All right, give me the doubles. Give me the doubles. Oh, that was kind of almost doubles. Oh, I can still land there. Look at it. I can do it again, guys. Holy shit cakes. We're going to travel over there again. We're going to just fly over there with Dreadwing. Oh, and again, we are going to encounter the character. We're going to do the exact same thing. I could trade. I could force a trade. I'm going to... I'm just going to battle. It's free. And uh, it's literally... I don't think there's anything that the Cat Burglar can pull out of their hat right now. They are a little bit stronger. Oh, they are actually. But... Not compared to my flail. Nine to fourteen. I'm going to continue with that. They could have technically, I guess, re-rolled one of my dice, but I think I don't know. It gets a little. Yeah, they could right now. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I'm going to steal the belt. That will turn her strength from four to three and mine from eight to nine. Ta-da! Thank you very much. Now, of course, it gets even worse for this person here. I could just literally just prey on her uh, in this whole area. I can now start targeting, like, uh, health. Oh, you must be scared if you're going to go back and fight that thing. Desperate. Desperado. I've got my hand on the reroll button. Oh, it's a win. It's a win for the Lord of the Pit for one health taken off the Cat Burglar. Now, again, if all my attacks that I just did were all damage attacks, she would have she would have died there. Boom, dead. Now, again, you do not want to have somebody flying around like I'm doing right now, uh, just you know, predating upon you. <laughs> I'm gonna roll. Hopefully, doubles. Nine still allows me to go uh, many, many places. I'm gonna leave the uh, the poor the poor bugger alone. We can go to the runes, but any creatures that you fight here add two to their attack rolls. Uh, I do not want to go in quite yet. I am just I am almost ready to. I'd have to be really lucky though to to pull that off. Really lucky. Just to get through the door, I'd have to roll on two dice, under eight or under. So instantly, I've got a 33% chance of failing. No, no, not yet, not yet. I'm going to go to the runes. I'm going to fight around here for a bit. Oh, I've got four gold. You know what? I think uh, right when I land, I think I'm going to alchemize uh, gold. And I'm going to get some spells here. I'm going to gain a spell. Nullify. Cast at any time on any character. That character must discard all of their spells. 
including myself. So you got to be really careful of that. Um, I'm going to grab another. Use it or lose it. I'm going to grab another spell. Lightning Bolt. Cast at any time on any character. That character is stunned for the duration of that turn. So you basically uh, skip a turn. And Alchemize Gold once more. I, I'm going to Replenish Fate. I want one Light Point. So now I can alter. Uh oh, what happened there? Something happened. Something made a whooshing sound. Oh, well. Let's draw an adventure card. Enchanter! An enchanter seeks an able adventurer. To the first character landing here with a craft of four or more, which is me, ah, uh, he will grant one of the following wishes of their choice, then vanish. Gain one spell, gold, strength, craft, life, or fate, or teleport to any space in this region, which I could use to teleport back on top of the cat burglar once again. <clears throat> Now, don't forget, when you kill somebody, your opponent, they they just go back to the pool and they grab like another three random cards and then they they fucking look and they're like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back and and uh, that's this guy. Uh, the only way that a death is permanent is once you're actually in the end game and we're not quite there yet. All right, I am going to I think get a cra uh, a fuck I don't know what do I want. I'm almost going more the strength route now. I am going to... Ah, oh, it's tempting. It is so tempting. Thing is, if I fight something, you know what? I have got the flail, um, but I have nothing to help me out in the craft department. So, there. Now, if I come across a demon, which I can't use a flail against, which... Don't ask me why you can't. Oh, a desert. You're going to lose a life instantly. Wow, this guy's almost like throwing his character away. And an even Steven roll here. Oh, the Hobgoblin for the win. He's down another life point, guys. He's down to one life point. If I kind of swoop in, I could kill that character, and he drops everything, and I can just pick it up. I, I, I think I should just let this guy hang himself. He's no threat to me. All right. Well, once again, um, <clears throat> should I cast Lightning Bolt? Yeah, you know, I'm going to do that next turn, I think. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, if you, if you ever hear me laughing like this around the table, guys, you're probably fucking, I hope you guys are, like, Got it. Again, a good sense of humor. Oh, I could land there. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a... Oh, no, it's a desert, though. And I don't have a, um, a flask. I will take a hit point of life if I land there. Or I could get healed. Or I could enter the portal of power. Or I could re-roll. What cards can I use? This sucks. It's kind of like a shit roll no matter where I go. I suppose I could take a life, but I'd kill the cat burglar. Who has got lots of followers. And it's got the gnome. Okay. All right. I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. Cat Burglar's got to go. I'm going to take a hit point of life. I can just spend a gold anyway just to gain my uh, my health back. Oh, dude. I'm never, never like this, guys. But I'm doing it now. Uh, normally, I'm more conscious. of uh, If I'm playing with friends, I'm kind of like, okay. But meanwhile, my son, for instance, uh, is fucking wow. You're anywhere close 
to him, and uh, and he's got he's got enough to beat you. Yeah, he will move right in and just uh, teach you a lesson and steal your stuff. And you're like, you prick. All right, here's the chance to re-roll since we both have uh, dark dark points. Okay, I am going to hit. I'm not stealing the flying carpet. We're, we can just take that from her dead body when we're done. And hit her for a point of life. All right, flying carpet. I've got so many uh, ways to move here. You may evade creatures and characters in the woods. See, this guys, these guys here are, um, they're vampire food. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I might even be able to finish the game now. If you want the mercenary as your follower, pay a gold. You know what? I can make gold. Fuck it. Let's do her. Oh, I won. Why did I win? Oh, no, it's not the game. Fuck, man. I'm like, I won the game? I'm like, no, I didn't. All right, so once again, three. And the guys that you are already looked through, you actually, I think you have to throw them out of the pool. I'm sure, I'm sure that's what the house rule is. I hate those little, I hate those little achievements that I get popped up. These are the achievements that are built into the game now. It's like, fuck, now I've got one for the PlayStation and one for the new game and... Always oh, playing as an elf. Isn't that uh, appropriate? Running around, fucking centaurs, and the Baba Yaga in the woodlands. Good luck with those guys, my friend. It attacks you, you're going to instantly lose a life. They're not always friendly in the woods. <laughs> and now Baba Yaga, if you roll a one here, it's going to kill you right off the bat. What does it say? An old woman. I've, I've died from this person. Uh, yesterday, I, I fucking ran into this thing. Look at the fucking picture. That's awesome. With her, with her running, uh, her hut in the background. Like it's an, it's actual. It's a Russian story of this, this lady who lived in the woods, and the 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 shack had like chicken legs, and it could move around. It's like really weird if you think about it. Um, an old woman reveals herself as Baba Yaga, the most wicked of all witches. Roll one die to see what curse she lays on you. Add one to the result for each fate you have. I had zero fate. I rolled a one, and she killed me. It, but none of them are good. It, look at it. All of them are really, really, really bad. And he's just drawn that. You've lost a life now. Now you got to make a roll. You get plus three to the roll, though. That's nine. You lose a fate still. Oh, he re-rolls! What an idiot! <laughs> oh, what an idiot! Okay, I gotta go back. I gotta check out the Baba Yaga here. I wanna see what just happened to him. Because he, he rolled a one. But he got plus... Plus... Three. So four. Kill one of your followers. He didn't have a follower. Um... Hop on Dreadwing. What a great, great, great trophy. It's probably the, one of the better ones that you can get out of the uh, the um, the wood, um, the highlands. I think I might actually do another run around there just once more, and then we're going to go to the end. Especially now, the elf is a brand new character. Not a lot to worry about there. Now, there is ways to easily come back from a game. Uh, I could easily die. You, you just Things can change in this game very, very rapidly. I want to go here, the Hidden Valley. I don't care what's there. I'm pretty confident I'm able to take it out. 
I'm going to cast that um, Electrify. What's this Nullify? What is this? Now, again, the elf is not a ca like a spellcasting character. The spellcasters are really annoying, guys, because they have a rule that states as soon as you, you discard your last spell, you grab another one, and it's just terrible. Terrible. They'll, they'll get rid of one bad one, and then you, they'll have another worse one, and you're just like, fuck, and they will fuck you around. Especially with the expansion packs. You get so many new spells that you're like, oh, I could just, and then all of a sudden you're thinking about all these things you could be doing. And, uh, for the duration of that turn, well, so we'll cast that next turn. Um, I'm going to continue. Let's, uh, draw an adventure card because you have to draw up to three. The Holy Lance is not a bad weapon, but really I would just alchemize it. <laughs> now I'm going to fight these two bandits and uh, or the bandit and the saber two tiger. I'm going to kill them both. I'm like the last guy that actually paid paid money to uh, to get rid of them. You bribed them. I'm not doing that. No, 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 no. Come. I'm just kind of just giving them the come hither wave. And uh, yeah, they they should be worried. Give me a doubles. Doubles here would be super good. That's a good roll though. Sixteen. So they're 10. Slayed them both. Was it the bandit riding the saber tooth tiger? Maybe. We'll never know, though. Because uh, we ask questions later. <laughs> All right. We're going to grab the, uh, the Holy Lance. And you know what? I'm going to trade trophies because I've now got a value of 8 there. So we're going to trade that and that for a strength. Oh, we are moving up, guys. Yeah, we're going to do one more run, I think, through the uh, the Highlands, and that's it. We're going to wrap the game up. That's the plan. Okay, now I'm going to end the turn. I'm going to pause. I'm going to uh, queue that up. I'm going to resume the game. And that should fire it off. Should fire it off. The elf, of course. <laughs> oh, I could counterspell it with my nullify, but I'm not going to do that. That would be stupid. Okay, that's uh, instantly it's back to my turn again. Nice. Nice. All right. We're going to hop on board, and we are going to the Highlands, and we're going to do a quick lap around there, hopefully. Oh, and especially with rolls like that. Check it out, my friends. Look, at deep into the Highlands instantly to the Ridgeway. All right. Let's check it out. It's kind of like uh, steps, eh? All right. Well, we're going to travel there. It's hard to get fade in here. In this area. Uh, the other area, I'd be uh, much better at getting it. I don't know if I really want to use that right now. I I mean, a life? I, you know what? Uh, I'm going to continue. I'm going to just take the, the hit point. So hopefully by now, anyone who's been watching from start to finish has got a somewhat good idea of how the game's played. It's brilliant, though, even, in, like I said, playing this in person with your friends is just it is awesome just you try to re-roll roll the two leprechaun that's not what you want to be rolling gain a gold yeah but you could also become a toad and toads are not good toads are really 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 bad that is your uh, 
you can only move like uh you know one square you got one strength one craft you suck Trying to get comfy here. Now, do I want to fly through here? Uh, or walk. I might want to walk. Experience all the pleasures. Now, there's certain areas that we really want to get through, uh, such as this. You don't want to go here or the mountain pass. Or the lost city is not the, not the best either. Um, I don't know. Let's walk it for now. Let's just uh, kind of take our chance. We do want to actually get stronger. Uh, and into the fucking cave. I don't want to go into the cave. Four, five, or six, though, I gain money. Oh, I gain money. You know what? Let's do her. Yep. That's, uh, that's where we're going to go. Fuck this. And four, five, or six. Give me a four, five, or six. Oh, a three. Lost for a turn. Well, shit. I wasn't expecting that. I was willing to fight fight something. I wasn't uh, willing to give up a turn, though. God damn it. Now, I'm not willing to uh, give up a fate point either for that. Oh, he gets to spread it around. Where's he going? He's got a uh, dark. He's dark bound now. That means any card that you generally pull in the Woodland uh, card set, you'll see a little white or dark symbol, and it's depending on what higher number you have in either or. That's what the effect will be. Some are good, some are bad. So being dark bound necessarily doesn't mean you're evil. Uh, you know, yesterday I was playing a priest, a, a neutral priest that had the curse destiny, and he could just like... No, he would deny, like, any evildoers from, like, even using their rerolls. It was fucking cool. And he played Temporal Warp for another three fucking turns. Holy shit. All right, I guess I'm sitting back and watching this. There's not really much I can do here. So I missed a turn. He ended up getting tem Temporal Warp. Hey, why didn't I fucking... I should have countered that. Oh... Uh... I shouldn't have been talking. I could have countered that. I have a fucking nullify spell. Oh, yeah, you're... That's not good, dude. She is not a nice person to kill. Subtract two from your craft. Yeah, because you're dark bound. Oh, I want that. I want that. I want that. Oh. <laughs> I want that item now. Luckily, he has to move on now. He has the option to move back. As well, so you'll have another chance to actually re-land on, on that that square. But good luck f fighting that creature. Lion, that's not bad uh, for his his level. Strength 3 and 3, he's going to dominate. Um, I'm going to counterspell that. There we go. Now he's forced to fight. I should have done that with the temporal thing, but fuck you. I hope you uh, lose a point of damage. Yes! Yes! Take that, you bastard. Now he's going to take a, another hit point. I'm not re-rolling anything there. <laughs> now he's down to one hit point. Could could wipe out this player yet again. You can just imagine your friend right now would be... They'd, they, everyone would concede, right? Would, would you actually keep playing this all the way to the end? Let me know in the comments, because I, I don't know if I would. I, I don't know if this was uh, if I was the elf slash uh, cat burglar slash um, minstrel. I think I would have probably given up a little while ago. Now, saying that, I shouldn't be cocky here. Okay, the uh, the the destiny path has been switched. Finally. Ooh, what's this? Can I just... 
Uh, that's a bad roll. I mean, I, I know it's a one or a two, but I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose health either. Now this is where it could get dangerous for me. Especially here, if you you can encounter lightning creatures, and if you've got like metal armor, which I do, I have the magic helmet. <laughs> uh, an extra extra wound. All right, you know what? Uh, I'm going to do a, a fair trade-off here. I'm going to alchemize uh, the last gold piece that I have to heal one life. I'm going to travel there. Uh, then I'm going to hope I don't roll a uh, one. <laughs> and if I do, I've already paid for it. That sucks. I'm going to just... Uh, I'll take the damage. Whatever. I, that was a gold. Thing is, though, it gets... Does it roll? Oh, it doesn't. It's going to stay in this. I wanted it to start rolling. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get some more gold, my pretties. Don't you worry. Now, again, this uh, this game is uh, couch co-op, four players. Wicked. But you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get a little pissed off with the um, uh oh, Shelob's lair by the looks of it. Um, you're gonna get a little pissed off with the interrupts. Now it uh, with a recent patch, it's definitely made it a lot better. So you can instantly, if somebody says, "Hey, interrupt," you can hit the now the you can hit the triangle button. It allows people to actually uh, make their moves. These things are fucking annoying. Those things, if they uh, attack you and win, they drop an object. They'll make you drop an object. It's uh, it's terrible. All right, let's keep on walking. Oh, what was that? What was that, man? All right. Well, we're going to roll. No, you know what? No, we're not going that way. We're going to go to the ravine. We're going to draw two cards. No. You know what that is? That's gold. And a harpy. Harpy first. Oh, fuck! I'm going to take that. Um, I'm a little uh, worried here. Why did I... Oh, oh, that was a craft fight. Harpies are craft? Oh, could I... Uh... In that case, what is... See, that's why I'm I'm uh, increasing my craft, so I don't get I don't get jumped by those things. Uh, well, I'm going to alchemize an object, and it will be that stupid. Uh, I'm not drinking that unstable potion or whatever. Oh, oh, you know what? The holy lance. Add one to your strength. That adds three against dragons. But again, the flail allows me to, to get at least, at least two. And yeah, there we go. Perfect. Two. Two gold in the pocket. Bing. Six. Oh no. What happened? Oh, and three gold for each magic object. Oh, brutal. Oh, nice. That's nice. So if you ever want to, on the digital version, guys, if you want to check this out, I'm not sure about uh, PC. 
but you go into here, you go into that far, and you can go into the garbage, and you'll see what was just discarded. And I wanted to check out... Uh, was it adventure? Yeah, the Holy Lance. So that's a magic object. So that was definitely one. What was the other thing that I had got rid of? Uh, was it from the woodlands? Unstable. Yeah, ma another magic object. Oh, beauty. Beauty. I didn't even know that. Six gold, man. I am like... <laughs> I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, alchemize gold. Let's get ourselves back up to uh, uh, back up to scratch here with our newfound earnings. Cast on any space at any time. Any creatures and characters in the space may be evaded until the end of turn. Now, see, the thing is, I have now reached the max amount of spells that I can carry. So, the thing is, you have to be able to cycle through the spells quickly. Sometimes, you end up sitting on a spell and you don't have a condition to fire it off, and it's frustrating. So, as a spell user, you normally have a way to be able to cycle through them fairly quickly. Uh, as me, as a, a person that can cast spells innately, um, it's harder for me to acquire them. Like I said, I have to alch alchemize the gold and blah, 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 blah. So, that will end my turn. Oh, is it? No, let's, uh, one more. I want some more fate. Now, if I were to add one more light fate... To, uh, to my light pool, I would now be considered bound, which is, it's different. It's uh, certain conditions are met, and it says if you're bound, uh, and not, being bound sometime is not a good thing when you're running around the woodlands. I am not in the woodlands, however, so fuck it. I just remember that. We are just, uh, now we're just considered bound, we, we have both. That's why it's it's now white. Oh, actually, it's because I'm maxed out, too. I am absolutely maxed out. That was a perfect move for me. And I rolled a one, so I get to roll for the uh, the Grim Reaper. Uh, we will move him towards... Uh, not me. You don't want him landing on you. You don't want that roll. Holy fuck, he died again. Back is the ghoul. The ghoul is uh, is actually not that bad. Um, I'm going to get rid of these two spells right off the bat. And nullify, though. Nullify. What is nullify again? I should be uh, watching what my opponent is doing here, but... It's details. Ah, uh, ah! Uh, I should have done that ages ago. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. You're sucking uh, the person's brain out. All right. I think I'm gonna use these spells the next uh, next time I fight, which sucks. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Actually, if we can get around that uh, the one corner piece, I'm okay with that. Give me a nice roll here. Nine. Oh shit! What is this? All right. Okay, one save card. I'm going to travel there. And uh, we have to still draw another card because it says draw two cards. If there are any cards in this space, draw only enough for two. Cobalt! Oh, no! No! <laughs> so I think what we're going to do, we are going to uh, continue and counter. I'm going to use the flail. Magic helmet. Can I cast this? Why can't I cast this? Oh, it has to be psychic combat. All right, I gotta do that. I gotta get rid of that. Thing is, it's only a craft of three.
That's so weak. But it's the only way I can cycle through these cards. I'm going to, uh, funny enough, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cast that. We're going to evade it. <laughs> the kobold. What? Don't make me do this. What's, what's going on here? Choose a space. Well, it's going to be right beside me. Oh, I just fucked that up. Oh, I just fucked that up. Oh, well, you know what? Fuck me. It's okay. It's used up one of the spells, but then I used a uh, fate. But you know what? Now I'm light bound. Uh, I don't mind that either. And I've also used uh, another spell. And killed the creature anyway, so whatever. It's all it's all win-win. Ooh, a bag of gold. You can imagine, guys, when you're playing just the base, the core set, it's it's boring. It's it's fun at first, but then playing the same boards, man, it's just you, you get really. Kind of bored with that uh, one. Oh, into the hills, or we can go backtrack and uh, <coughs> precipice, but no. And I even get to use and move the Reaper. Ambush! Looks like the one guy's got his pants down. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh no! <laughs> move, the, move the closest enemy in the region to the space. If two or more enemies are an equal distance away, you choose which enemy has moved here. If there are no enemies in this region, draw one card instead, then move the closest enemy in this region to this space. Okay. Well, whatever. Bring it on. That's neat. Oh, it's the mountain dragon. Oh, it's the rematch. Shit. Would have been uh, nice to have that evade uh, creature now, right? Oh, well, we're going to kick its ass anyway. Come on! Oh. Death. Death to the mountain dragon. That didn't go over as well as last time. And you know what? Its strength is eight, guys. An instant trophy. An instant trophy strength. Thank you very much. And uh, do we have any gold? Yes, we do. We're going to alchemize gold. This is an incredibly, incredibly powerful person here. Um, do I want to be light bound? Uh, I'm, you know what? I'm not going to replenish fate. I do like having a choice here. I like being either light bound or, or dark bound. I do not like being unbound. Um, like I said, weird things can happen. And it's generally, from what I can see, not in my best interest. Now, it depends on the situation. Okay, we're rolling for the Reaper. If I can land that on somebody, and we're going to move it towards uh, this guy over here. Essentially, what the Reaper does is it brings up this chart here. It can one-shot you. So you don't want him landing on you. And like people are always, especially with more players. I decided not to play a three uh, person because as you add more people, obviously the game gets a, a lot more complex. And uh, he's in the fairy ring. Have fun with that. With a three, attack, lose a life. He rolled a five, blessed, gain a fate. I am, uh, I'm gonna re-roll that though. I'm not allowed to re-roll that. Come on. That's not, that's kind of cheese. All right, anyways, what do we got coming up here? The Ring of Protection. Those is, I want. Oh, it saves me from uh, taking a point of life. 
and the leprechaun. That's not a really good roll. Like, you don't want to roll a double one, guys. And it happens. I mean, it's not hard. I mean, it's Statistically, it's less likely, but... You have a 1 in 6 chance, so yeah, and then you got about a 1 in 12 of that happening, I think, roughly, if my, maybe even a little more. But still, it, it happens. Would it be 1 in 48 chance? I think that, that sounds almost right. Um, well, let's roll. Fuck it. Uh, we're going to the Lost City. I don't know if I want to go there. Roll two dice. Lose followers. Oh, man. Or I go to this other shitty place. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to go there. And then uh, next turn we'll, uh, we'll fly with Dreadwing. I get to draw a card. And I may have to actually uh, encounter the space again. But that's okay. If it's going to start generating me a whole bunch of creatures... Or gold? Like the crag crowd growler. Oh, oh no. What am I going to do? I'm going to use him for a trophy. That's what I'm going to do. I sh probably shouldn't even use the flail. Now, this is where my buddies, uh, they tend to be a little more aggressive than I am. Uh, I tend to like to get my character up there. I am more than ready to go. Like, I'm just, I need to fly through here. I need to get to the, the portal of power. It is time to go. I'll have fun with that, my friend. Your dark bound kill one of your followers, even if, uh, if it defeats you. And, uh, you killed it. Good for the ghoul. The ghoul is actually a good character. Um, it's got a good special ability. I'm not sure what it is. Let's go take a look. Whenever you defeat a character in psychic combat, if you choose to take one of their lives, add it to your own. So if you attack somebody, when you attack another character, you may choose to make the attack psychic combat. So it doesn't have to be battle. There is definitely a difference between if you're in a battle with somebody, you're, you are comparing strength versus strength. If you're in a psychic attack or psychic combat, it is craft versus craft. You don't mix the two, right? You don't add, unless you have very, very rare and specific items. So this guy is absolutely allowed to attack both with a psychic or a battle attack, which is actually only really magic users are allowed to do that. So he can come at you from either way, which allows him to kind of, and he's already crafty to begin with, right? Um, it's, it's definitely, it's kind of a neat little twist. And uh, he had another fucking ability, didn't he? When you kill an enemy in battle, you may raise it from the dead and keep it as a follower instead of a trophy. And you can add it for uh, in your next battle to uh, add its strength to your attack. Uh, not always a great feature, but handy to have regardless what happened. What happened? Was that me to get out of the fucking thing? It was too. I'm going to have to re-encounter this area. So that allows me to draw another card. That's okay. Lightning hammer! Like as if I fucking need anything more. Add one to your strength during battle. Whenever you fight more than one enemy at the same time, you may add three to your strength instead of one. Let's grab that. We can uh, we can even alchemize it for three gold. <laughs> Thor's hammer just... It's nothing compared to... Uh... We need to get out of here, though. I'm, 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 I'm ready for the end game. I was up yesterday, I played this one match, I think it was for about six hours, guys. It was like, holy. I'm glad I didn't televise it. Televise it. Oh my god. That's, that's dating me. <laughs> Televised. Alright, I'm out of there. And uh, we are going to uh, continue. And we are going to fly away on Dreadwing. Let's get the hell out of Dodge. Hopefully we don't roll some weird number that makes us you know, go to the Leprechaun or something stupid like that. Oh, good. Right past where we wanted to be, the precipice. 
Perfect. Fly on to the other side. So we are now on the other side of the Lost City. Good, good, good. Try to get to draw a card. A ruby, which is good. We can sell that to the prospector. Oh, for three gold. Or I could alchemize it for one gold. That's interesting. I could definitely keep that in my pocket if I absolutely need to destroy it, if I need health or whatever. Ah, we'll worry about it then. Meanwhile, we are closing in again on the Eagle King. Yes, you can beat them up multiple times. <laughs> He's going up against the Baba Yaga again. Not a good idea. He joins him as a follower. He's now got the Centaur. And he will discard any enemy that you come across. Ooh, a five. Uh, discard one of your objects. What a absolute... I need to destroy that card. That's that's the reason why you don't want to go into the wood, woodlands anymore. It's because the Baba Yaga is being pulled. All right, we are, uh, I don't think there's anything really good in front of us. Cross the bridge, I don't know, canyon, three cards. I'm going to, all right, we're just try it. We're just going to walk. Come on, give me a high number. All right, five. Fuck, it's a little higher than I wanted, but. All right, let's go here to face the Eagle King again with uh, strength combat. Mano a mano. The flail. Always the flail. The magic helmet. It is useless. Put down your weapon! <laughs> Boom! Right off the fucking top of the mountain. Woo! <laughs> it flies like it's, uh, it's Skyrim. <laughs> oh, dudes. You know, I could that'd be perfect if I could actually edit this and you could have the the, the frost giant flying off into the distance. <laughs> that'd be excellent. Uh, okay, well we're gonna continue. We're gonna draw a new card, the Windlord Amulet for a relic, and this is the is specific to this uh, this expansion pack. Add two to your craft during psychic combat. If you defeat another character and force them to lose a life, the character cannot use armor to prevent the loss of life. So that's good. Now I've actually got my Psychic Combat Flail. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I will definitely take that. I'm, I must be getting close to my max, though, of like the, the items that I can carry. And look at this. Where, do, where are we going to go? Anywhere the fuck we want. We're going to go right to the Portal of Power. Because we're going in. We're knocking. We're going to see who's home. And uh, whether or not we can finish... Uh, the game off and that is two bags of gold thank you very much it's what the alchemist wants yeah you better be scared picking your new fates of uh, uh paths of fate and stuff like oh. now those paths of destiny only last while you're inside of the uh, the woodlands expansion there Oh, that's a good card. That allows you to uh, draw a new destiny and you actually attach it as if you've earned a destiny. It's it's a powerful item. Something that I would probably think about taking away from that, that character if I, uh, you know... If they weren't so insignificant. Now, that may be, be a huge, huge difference when that thing becomes powerful, if it does. Let's say I'm not able to get in here. I'm just going to roll the dice, because uh, we only got to go one space. And uh, I'm going here into the Plane of Peril. i got to stop here, move only one space per turn. Yeah, we're going to travel through here. Oh, so anyways, I'm uh, because I have the gnome. It, it's only it's only requiring me to roll one die, uh, and then it's matched against my uh, like I've basically just walked right in, uh, auto open. 
Nice. That's nice. That is because uh, I also have the shovel, guys. Like, I'm, I'm not doing too bad here. I may actually see which route I'm going to take, what I'm going to test against. It's not a sure for sure win, uh, but I'm definitely getting close. Oh, the knocker. That guy sucks. And the Baba Yaga, too. There's more than one Baba Yaga? Oh, that's nice. Can't be turned into a toad. Good luck with this, though, bud. Standoff? Oh, I shouldn't have done that. That was stupid. That was that was a bad bad roll there. Fuck. Well, shouldn't matter soon. The Baba Yaga? Discard. Fuck, there's nothing good there. All right, he went up in craft. Not bad. That was kind of a lucky roll. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at what the gnome does. The gnome is uh, over here. He's one of my characters that I picked up. There he is. Yeah, so you need only uh, roll one die when opening the portal of power by craft and two dice in the mines. Now, he's definitely a good guy. And uh, what else? Do we have an item? Yes. We have the shovel. After rolling the dice in the crypt, subtract two from the total. All right, so how is that going to help us here? Well, if we look here at the mines, I only have to roll two dice there. That's good. Or the crypt where I subtract two from the dice roll. Okay. No, we're going to go uh we're going to go this route because everything else is combat. Watch this guys. We were we're we're cracking the <laughs> we're cracking the uh crown of command. We're going to travel there because we can only move one space per turn, so you don't roll for that. Now, because of the gnome, we were only rolling two dice. What you do is you compare uh you subtract that uh from your craft. Seven from craft is zero. That means I stay in the mines. If I if I actually deviated by one more point, I could have gone back a square. And I would keep having to do this. So I passed it. That is good. We're going to continue. And that will end my turn. So I success, successfully navigated the, uh, the mines. This guy keeps switching his, uh, his, his paths of destiny here. Dryad. You know, half-ass, I really appreciate you watching because I know it's you. It's got to be you. I have a feeling you're just putting your phone aside and, and not killing, kind of watching. I think or you're close by or listening or something. And thank you. Thank you very much. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go to the Vampire's Tower here now. Uh, roll one die to determine how many lives the vampires take. Uh, you may discard any number of followers to avoid this loss of life. Which I'm going to do. Now, because we are playing with alternative alternative um, uh, quest or endings, um, I may have to make this trip again. I may have to. Hopefully not. Now, the other player knows exactly what the ending is. He Remember way back at the beginning of the Woodlands, he actually had that time. He looked at the card, and he knows what the alternative ending is. I don't. So, we're going to move there. We're going to roll a die. It's going to take one life from me. Okay, that's great. I am actually going to allow him... I'm going to take the hit point. I'm going to keep all my followers. Oh, the ghoul fucking re-rolled. You son of a little bitch. Now it's three lives. Fine. There's nobody I want to get rid of here. Ah, you know, the panhandler. Fuck him. And the haggler. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm going to feed them to the vampires.
and take a, a hit point. All right, so I hope you guys see how I kind of paid that off there. All right, now I'm about to crack the crown of command. All right, he gets to look at all the uh, top 10 cards or something and put them back the way he wants or discards or whatever. Okay, now we got to finally go to the pets. Fight. The pet fiends. Neat. Sorry, guys. I'm just uh, listening to the different sounds on the uh, on the board here. Okay, so I go in. We're going to fight the Pit Fiends. I roll a d6, and that will determine how many uh, Strength 4 monsters we are going to fight. That's not a big problem for us. One. Now, this asshole can re-roll if he wants again. Whatever. Let's see you do it, man. Come on. Do it. I dare you. Like, I don't care. There could be six. I'm, these things here are going to be all auto-kills. Now, again, though, I cannot keep these as trophies. Which kind of sucks. That ends my turn. You see, it takes a long time to get to the Crown of Command. So you got to be ready. you got to make sure you can pass all those little trials. You have to know what those trials are, though, first. Now... Playing this game is definitely really good for learning the core rules um, when you're playing uh, the actual board game. I would suggest almost uh, playing this first. It explains some of the little tiny nuances. Again, though, I want that cloak. That cloak is, uh, is really, really good, too. All right, so finally, we are not going to there. We're going to the Valley of Fire. I remember there, uh, my friends, the uh, the other day, um, I was really excited when I got in because he was super aggressive, went for the ending. I got through with something in eight. I had like an eight craft, and I'm like, yeah, and he's like, settle down. I'm like, hey, man, I said, yeah. I, that's a big victory that I actually just pulled off there. He's still trying to get that Scythian Unicorn. Good luck with that. No wonder, though, I want those things, too. Uh, unfortunately, though, I am way beyond that. Another life lost. Just foolish, foolish way to go. Should have probably started with the city. It is now, as you see, we can continue on, but we are not going to. We are going to go right into the hidden ending. Boom. What is it? The Eagle King. This is uh, one of the easiest ways to do it. Look at that. We're going to wrap this right at the three-hour three hour mark. We're going to wrap this up. And continue. All i got to do is fight this guy. I've already beat the shit out of him fucking twice. Again? <laughs> okay, we are going to move in with the uh, battle strength. And, uh, yeah, we are just going to use the flail. This is going to end the game very, very suddenly. And it will just say you won. I mean, this is the condition of what we have to do. If, oh, there is a there is a number attached to him here. Let's see if we can read that. A character on the crown of command must choose whether to attack the Eagle King using strength or craft. Each time they defeat the Eagle King, they must remove one of the Eagle King's lives and immediately attack him again. If a character has a standoff or is defeated, their turn ends and they must immediately move to the crags. If a character removes the Eagle King's last life, they win the game. If there are no characters on the crown of command, the Eagle King heals all his lives. Neat. Neat. And he's coming through at a 12. A mighty 12. If I didn't have the flail, it's going to be a close call here. I'm rolling, rolling. Oh, it doubles! That means he's not allowed to add his dice roll. I get him. I get him for the win. 
That's uh, one point of health removed. He's now down to three. Waiting for the ghoul. See if he's going to do any shenanigans with the uh, the dark fate. He doesn't. I win. I'm going again directly into another battle here. I have to. We're going to use the flail. Flail, of course. And the helmet. Always go in, man. Safety first. Roll the dice. Go for the doubles or big numbers. Ten. For a total of 20, he can't win. That is another win for me. He is now down to two life. Can we actually wrap this up? We shall see. If I get, uh, if I lose or there's a standoff, I'm back to the crags, my friends. But I do actually have the ability to re-roll one of my rolls twice. Uh, again, we're going in with a flail. Big rolls, big numbers. 17 to 16. That was close. It looked like it was turning up a five. That's uh, that's a win for me. Unless Buddy decides to re-roll my five, he could totally do that. And I would if I was him. I would have totally done that. He has a dark point. I don't know why he didn't do it. All right, this is it. Can I do it? One last remaining health on the Eagle King for the win. I'm on Dreadwing. He's flying in on his little uh, secondary uh, unit. The one that uh, I didn't steal. Oh, that's it. That is it, guys. That is how you win a game of Talisman. And, uh, you know, it helped that I had the almighty alchemist. Awesome. That's not only a win, it's a total win. That is a shattered sieve super ending. I'm liking that. We'll pull back, kind of see the last, uh, you know, the way the board was kind of set up as we leave it. Boy, that's really dramatic and slow. But there is shit all over the boards. Uh, the woodlands, you'll see how it packs up with a lot of cards. Really good for a lot of action, right? Even if your guys die, you go back into the woodlands. It's not too hard of creatures. And uh, the, the highlands off to the left, bottom left, that is more hardcore. You want to be kind of uh, at your mid-range before you go into the highlands. But really, I think your best setup is kind of do what I do. Start in the city, uh, make your way over to the woodlands hit the highlands and then you're kind of seeing where you're at there at the end game uh winner winner chicken dinner i've won more games than this guys like i used to be level fucking like 10 or 12 or something but because of the the last patch they kind of reset everything which kind of sucks because this is a couch co-op game too guys which makes it incredibly versatile any of you guys who want to kind of set up all the big boards but you don't have the room this is how you're going to do it right like i said this game can take upwards of like 30 minutes to set up once you're shuffling like the 220 adventure cards you know what i mean like ooh. now these are cheater uh cheater cards i uh i don't i don't use them but whatever level three winner so the wins are uh, are great Still a fledgling fighter. That, guys, is that. That is uh, Talisman Digital Edition. Um, it's Watch out for the DLC. It's a little pricey, and they t tend to gouge you. Like, uh, here, let me just set up a quick little game just so you can kind of see. That's a uh, new game. Uh, we're going to start with uh, what type of expansions we want, right? So what I did is I played right there that last game. I can play right now in my house. I could just go downstairs, set up the board. I'd have all those pieces, all that shit at my fingertips. But without having to put it all down. Now, I ended up buying this as a digital uh, package. It comes with uh, the, the Frost March, the Dungeon, um, Sacred Pool... It does come with a city, but all of a sudden here, these are the expansions that you don't have, okay? And uh, they add quite a bit of little stuff here. I ended up buying that. I had to buy that for, I think it was like four or five bucks. It's not expensive, but if you add it all up, it, uh, it can get a little bit pricey. But anyways, guys, that is my playthrough there of, you know, the awesome digital edition of talisman hope you guys liked uh what the playthrough i might uh i might do subnautica right now i feel like i'm in a talking mood but anyways good night guys take care thanks for watching and uh i'll see you on the flip side